Okay, well then I'd like to formally open the first day of the MAG meeting, obviously the second day of, of um, this process here. Um, the first um, agenda item is going to be approval of the agenda. Um, before we uh, display that though and, and go there, I'd like to give all of the um, MAG members a heads up, um, both those um, here physically and those that are participating online that I'm going to ask for a quick round of introductions where I will ask you to state your name, your country, or your organization, which stakeholder group um, you're here representing, and hopefully in sort of 10 words or less, what the IGF means to you or why you think the IGF makes a difference. And again, it's 10 words or less, not 10 minutes. <laughs> um, there's a, we have 55 MAG members, although I'm not quite certain how many are participating. 28 new MAG members, which has got to be one of the largest turnovers of MAGs in its, in its history. And actually, I think that's very exciting because I think that'll give us a lot of new blood um, and hopefully a lot of fresh ideas and, and uh, enthusiasm and, and energy. Um, but before we come to that, um, and I don't know, are we going to be displaying the agenda on one of the screens or in the WebEx somewhere? Again, we approve the agenda uh, day by day. Um, and today's, um, we're going to have some opening remarks by um, Ambassador Schneider, who was the host country co-chair for IGF 2017. And then the um, rest of the day, we'll actually be um, discussing um, uh, various topics related to the development of the IGF annual meeting and um, a number of the other intersessional activities as well. So the agenda has been posted for a few weeks. Um, I think we're still trying to figure out what we're doing with all the screens here. I don't know if we need two transcription screens. Um, it might be useful over the course of the day to be able to display some of the documents they're going to be referencing to. So if we can do that in the um, in, in the background. Okay, Chengatai says they're getting another laptop to be able to, um, to facilitate that. It's not, it's not critical at this point in any case. But let me call for approval of the agenda. Rasha, you're approving or you have a comment? Thank you. And I don't see, we're going to be using the speaking queue again um, today as well, so I don't see um, any comments yet in the, I need to open it up, it's not in the WebEx, um, from the speaking queue. So we'll call the agenda approved. And um, like I said, we're going to have some remarks from Thomas um, and myself, and then we'll open the working part of the meeting. But just now I'd like to um, have each one of the MAG members, again, state your name, country or organization, um, stakeholder group, if you are an, a new MAG member, incoming MAG member, or a returning MAG member, and then in sort of 10 words or less, um, what the IGF means to you, why you think it matters. And some of the MAG members have cards. I don't think all of the MAG members have cards, but we're just going to start and go down the rows and kind of go back and forth. So, G, could we kick off with you? Thank you, Madam Chair, for giving me this special favor, but uh, actually I'm not prepared. Um, uh, I'm glad that uh, this year China, um, from different stakeholders, we have a stronger uh, uh, presence in MAG. Now we have Press star six to unmute. We, we have uh, Professor Tao from Beijing uh, uh, University of Telecommunications, and we have Ms. Chong from Hong Kong. And uh, I um, hope that uh, in, in the coming year, China could make big contribution. And we are ready to work with colleagues from other countries. Thank you. Excellent. <coughs> thank, thank you, G. Sorry. Oh, yes. <laughs> you are now unmuted. Um, there's something in the background which continues to say you are now unmuted. And I'm not quite sure who's being muted or, or unmuted. Um, but, but G, again, you should introduce yourself. So your, the status, are you a, a new MAG member returning your country organization and why it matters? 
Could you do that, please? Um, my name is Ji Hao Jun from China, um, government uh, sector. Um, uh, as uh, I was stationed here in Geneva as a member of the permanent mission of China to UN, and uh, I have also been working on sub uh, governance uh, often on manner for quite a, a few years. Um, internet governance is a very difficult thing. It's a fragmented process, and uh, we hope that uh, MAC can be one of the convergent points for our future way forward. Thank you. Thank you, G. And you're returning MAG member as well, if you didn't say that. Rudolph? Good morning. Uh, my, name is my name is Rudolf Griedel. I am a new MAG member. I'm from Germany, Ministry for Economic Affairs, and responsible for Internet Governance. And? Why does the IGF matter to you? What do you think oh, it okay. means? It matters to us because we will, I mean, it matters in, uh, to us in general, but very specially because we will be host of the 2019 uh, IGF in Berlin. And uh, we are eager to participate this year and next year in the programming and uh, content and the organizational matters. Thank you. Jennifer. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jennifer Chung um, uh, from Dot Asia Organization, um, the private sector. I'm an incoming new MAC member for this year, so very happy to learn and grow with all of the MAC colleagues. Thank you very much, Mr. G, for the very kind introduction. Um, for us in Dot Asia and also myself personally, the IGF is very important to us because it is um, the crucial platform for us to have internet governance policy debated, and we very much support that. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Helani? Good morning. I'm Helani Galpaya. I'm uh, with an organization called Learn Asia, which is an ICT policy and regulatory think tank working across uh, the Asia Pacific. Um, and to us and to me, uh, the key differentiator of the ITU, um, of the IGF, sorry, is that this is about equal footing, and I take those two words very seriously. Um, at its best, yes, it could be a, learn, uh, a space where things are negotiated and <coughs> done, but I think if that doesn't happen, uh, I never lament about this because the IGF is really a connecting and a learning space where issues are debated. And as policy influencing civil society, we work in the spaces where things are actually negotiated in other fora with other IGOs and in other multilateral agencies. But the importance of the IGF, I think, is quite different. It's great if we come up with outcomes, but we have already shaped the debate and changed the way people think. And when we go to those other fora, it carries through. And a lot of the debates that take place elsewhere have already been debated at least at one IGF by the time another uh, inter intergovernmental agency takes it on. So I see this space as quite valuable, and I'm not you know, crying about the fact that there's no strong outcome, although I'll be very happy if there are great outcome documents. Thank you, Hlanti. And you t I'm probably going to mispronounce a few names, and if I do so, please correct me. I, I had several lessons last night to try and learn how to say <laughs> wout. <laughs> um, no, but you you, you're pronouncing it perfectly. Thank you. My name is Jutta Koll. Uh, I'm a new incoming MAC member working for the Digital Opportunities Foundation in Germany, so I represent civil society. And uh, what IGF means to me, um, you can see from the name of my organization that uh, we always put the opportunities for society, the opportunities of the internet for society in the focus of our work. and. Um, doing so for nearly 20 years now, I, I've learned that the IGF is the only cross-sector platform where we can have an exchange with stakeholders from other areas and uh, learn how they do address uh, issues like the digital divide, for example, like 
digital literacy, like child protection on the internet, and so on and so on, and, and also new technological innovations that might affect all the work that we are doing. So that's my focus on internet governance. Thank you. Thank you, Jutta. Sylvia? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is Silvia Cadena. I work for the APNIC Foundation. I'm representative of the technical community. I am originally from Latin America, but based in Australia. So I'm listed on a mark as uh, Colombia, but <coughs> my half of my working life is in the other side of the world, so I guess I will play ball in both fields. Um, and on the same token, uh, for me, the IGF is important. Um, to bring the issues that are relevant for the technical community um, in terms of uh, capacity building and knowledge about what the technical implementation of the internet actually means for other stakeholders. So for our organization um, across in, in the RARs across the, the globe, what is really important about the IGF is to be able to uh, clarify technical issues are, that will affect and impact uh, how uh, internet governance policy is debated. So when those policies come through, they don't affect how the internet actually works. So that's why I'm here, and, and I'm happy to be here and contribute. Thank you, Sylvia. Julian? Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm, my name is uh, Julian Casas Buenas. I'm from Colombia, and um, I'm representing civil society. Uh, this is my third term in the uh, MAC. And for me, IGF uh, means um, an opportunity uh, to use information and communication technologies, especially uh, the internet. And um, I see this as a platform, uh, IGF as an innovative platform that uh, allows multiple stakeholders to participate in the development of the internet. So it can serve as a platform for human uh, development uh, and to improve the quality of life of uh, a lot of people uh, and that, uh, can, that are not yet benefited by the uh, internet. <coughs> so our work is uh, mainly to bring uh, these uh, technologies for those people and improve their quality of lives. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. No. Right. Thank you. Good morning, all. Uh, my name is Mary Uduma. I'm from Nigeria, and um, I'm from the technical technical community um, group or stakeholder. And um, since I'm taking the floor for the first time, may I use it to congratulate you, the chair, and colleagues that are here. And I'm happy to be here to work with others that have been there, we'll learn from them. And I've been involved in, um, I was part of WISIS first phase and second phase, and I've been involved in IG issues in my region, in my country, in my sub-region. And um, this is, I'm so much interested in IGF because um, first is an open pl platform, no hierarchy equal footing, free learning, new knowledge, sharing. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a, a place where we, we level up a melting point on IG issues. And we take back whatever we learn from here and get back to our region, to our nation. And I've seen IG have grown in my own uh, country and um, bringing in um, different stakeholders and getting buy-in in what we do in IGF. So I'm really interested in IGF, thank you. Thank you, Mary. June? Good morning, I'm um, June Paris um, from Barbados. I represent ISOC Barbados. Um, I'm sort of new to internet. Your mic again, mic. Yeah, hi. No, no, no. Yeah, just, just push once. it once. Okay. We yeah. heard we heard the yeah. beginning. I'm new to mics as well. I'm new to the internet governance. I'm excited because it sort of brings everything 
to place in what I've thought about the internet over the years. I've worked with the internet, I've worked several years, but I never really understood how it's governed. So this is my chance now to find out and to pass this information back to my people in Barbados and to try to get them to understand the whole concept of internet governance. You should be able to help us then with a lot of our messaging. That's yes. Excellent. That's good. Thank you. Okay. Michael? Uh, my name's uh, Michael Irishevo. Under government stakeholders, I work for Zambia Police Service as a law enforcement officer. As an alumni of the African School Internet Governance, which was held in Mauritius 2014, I've come to understand the importance that internet governance brings to the space. As somebody from the Silent Voices, which is the law enforcement fraternity, uh, there are a lot of issues that are discussed here that must also trickle down to the law enforcement. There are various issues such as cyber security, freedom of expression, and many, many more. Uh, internet governance to me personally means a lot because it brings me in the forefront of global issues that are discussed pertaining to the internet. We have issues of cyber crime, we have issues of child online, we have issues of child online, what, protection, and other various issues. So basically, being the first law enforcement officer to sit on the mark, I think there's need in the future to bring in more law enforcement officers so that as we go on and on discussing matters of internet governance, we also take the little knowledge that we get from the forum and apply it from where we, from our stakeholder groups where we come from. Zambia has no internet governance forum, like we don't have a national NRI, though we are currently pushing to have one, God willing, by the, by the end of this year. So basically, everything that I've learned in the past one year, since I'm a second time MAG member, I'll, I'll try at all costs to ensure that it trickles down to the country level. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Sorina Telanu from um, Romania. I work with Diplo Foundation and I also chair the executive committee of CDIG, which is the regional IGF for Southeastern Europe. I am a new MAG member, but I am not new to IGF processes. Um, I am proud to be on this committee with everyone else. I will be very short about um, why the IGF is important to me. Speaking as someone from um, a regional community and coordinating a regional IGF, I think the IGF is an important space for bringing the voices of regional communities into global discussions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Liana? Hello, everyone. My name is Liana Galistan. I'm from Armenia. I represent a civil society. Uh, I work with the Internet Society of Armenia. Uh, and I'm a new MAG member. Um, we are doing a lot of activities in internet governance uh, sphere locally in Armenia. We have launched the School of Internet Governance and uh, I want to bring that perspective, a local perspective, to the global one. And uh, why uh, it is important, I would not say about that, but I would rather say that um, for several times, uh, we have launched our first uh, IGF uh, three years ago, and this year we will have the fourth one. And for all these years, we have trying to bring a um, MAG member to our national IGFs, and it was rather a challenging experience activity and it turned out to be easier for me to be a MAG member myself than to bring a MAG member from the region actually. Uh, so I hope that this challenge uh, will be solved in this way and um, we, I will, uh, and I also hope I will be the channel for bringing the perspective not only national to the global one but vice versa also. Thank you. Thank you. Israel. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. My name is Israel Rosas. Uh, uh, on behalf of the government of Mexico, for us, the, the IEF is important as former host country, of course, but also because this is the, the main global space to exchange ideas and best practices and also uh, for discuss uh, emerging issues uh, as well as the, the classical ones. Thank you. Thank you. Raquel. 
Thanks, Lynn. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Raquel Gatto. I work with Internet Society representing technical community. I can literally say I grow with the IGF. I've grown with the IGF. Uh, starting in the second meeting in, uh, when it was held in Brazil, uh, I started working with remote participation to bring remote participation and youth engagement to the IGF. Uh, but also I've done a PhD recently working those issues of the mode stakeholder approach in the international law. Uh, and I really see the IGF now why it matters um, because it's really this powerful space to bring everyone together and it's one of the most successful examples where the mode stakeholder approach works and where we can really see this new paradigm uh, on the internet governance ecosystem. I'm also very passionate about uh, the NIRs, the National and Regional Initiatives. Um, I'm in the program committee for the LAC IGF and especially flourishing uh, national IGFs in my region, Latin America. Thank you very much. Thank you, Raquel. Zina? Good morning, uh, Lynn. And uh, since this it's the first time I take the floor, I would like to welcome all the new MAG members and uh, congratulate you for your uh, uh, renomination uh, re as chair. Uh, my name is uh, Zena Buharb. I'm the head of international cooperation at uh, Ogero Telecom, which is the public fixed line operator in uh, Lebanon. Uh, I'm uh, a MAG member for the third year, and uh, my organization is, a, is uh, considered as a government since it's a public uh, operator. Uh, uh, I'm also uh, currently working on the establishment of the Lebanese IGF, which was launched uh, uh, in December uh, last year, and I'm uh, the head of the Lebanese uh, secretary, uh, the Lebanese IGF uh, secretariat. Uh, we are interested in participating in the IGF because we need to bring the views of the Lebanese community and maybe uh, the views of the Arab region in the global, uh, to the global community and to learn and uh, to learn from other initiatives because the Lebanese community is really uh, uh, asking to have this uh, discussion uh, in Lebanon. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Nabojša Regoje, but for all those that uh, have a problem pronouncing my name, they can call me just Neb. I'm, uh, no, that's, that's really easy. Uh, I come from Foreign Affairs Ministry of Bosnia and Herzegovina. I am speaking of the ministry. Uh, I am one of the pioneers of uh, internet governance in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. I started relatively soon, 10 years ago, and uh, ever since I uh, got in touch with uh, this issue, I realized that uh, the same way that uh, IGF can uh, give some experiences and uh, advices to my country, I believe that small countries have a possibility to contribute to uh, IGF. Uh, that keeps me uh, working on these issues. Thank you very much and looking forward to uh, working with all of you. Thank you. Danko? Uh, Madam Chair, fellow MAG members, my name is Danko Jevtovic. I'm from Serbia. I'm a new MAG member. I'm coming from the technical community. Uh, I'm currently um, have my consulting company, but I pre was previously managing the CC country code, the uh, top level domain name registry for Serbia. And I'm one of the internet pioneers in Serbia. I'm familiar with the work of IGF, mostly from my work with ICANN and with Center European Association of uh, CC Registries. I think that IGF process is very important for transitional countries and for communities. I'm here to serve my local community and also global community and work with my fellow MAG members to make the IGF great. Thank you. Thank you. I'm pretty proud of how well I've been doing on the pronunciations to date. and. Um, I'm not sure if it's Heiki or... Yeah, it's very, very nice. It's, yeah. I, my name is Heiki Zibul. I'm Heike. from Estonia. And I work in the Estonian Internet Foundation. And uh, I am new MAC member. And for me, the IGF is very important that 
different stakeholders in the very different countries di discuss together best practices and future of internet. In Estonia, access to the internet is human right, and it's my dream that it spare in all over the world. Thank you. Thank you. Arnold? Good morning, everyone. My name is Arnold uh, van Rijn. Correctly spelled, Arnold van Rijn, yeah, correct. Um, I'm from the Netherlands government and I work at the Ministry of uh, Economic Affairs and Climate Policy. This is my third year on the MAC and my aim this year as MAC member is to help to further improve the global multi-stakeholder internet governance forum by getting, uh, amongst others, more funders, strengthening the secretariat, continuing the valuable work uh, uh, during the uh, intercessions and innovating as much as possible the programming of the IGF. Thank you. Thank you, Arnold. My name is Adam Ajalo. I am from the Gambia, a new MAC member as well. I am very um, new to the IGF. But um, this is a great, um, I'm also from a civil society, representative from the civil society, but also will represent my country as a nation because I am the first Gambian uh, representative in the MAC. So I am very honored and I'm privileged to be within the midst of you all. So um, <coughs> my interest in the IGF is um, based on the fact that um, the Gambia haven't really um, established a con concrete um, internet policies and laws in the Gambia. So this is a great opportunity to, to learn and um, find means to um, improve and then um, establish and improve the internet um, laws and um, policies that are going to be adapted and then um, recognized by the Gambian, the youths and the government um, as, a, as a nation. So um, it's a great opportunity and a learning, pl learning pl platform for me. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Adam. <coughs> Hello everybody, my name is Mamadou Lo from Senegal, private sector. I'm working right now in uh, Agricultural Bank of Senegal uh, as a communication officer. I'm also involved in the in information field within internet governance to help uh, the African community, above all the French community, know more on what's happening on internet governance by translating some information uh, on internet governance. I think also information is very, very important for IGF because uh, that helps us be aware what happening right now in the field of internet governance to tackle issues pertaining to internet governance. And I'm working on that by uh, sending uh, 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 some information weekly on, the, in, uh, on, our, on, on, on our mail list, our ISCOM. Thank you very much. Before we move um, to Wisdom, just one second, Wisdom. Could I actually ask Anya to help organize the online participants? I meant to ask earlier so that when we're um, finished here in the room, um, saving the best for last, we'll come to the online participants, but it's, it's just a little more difficult to figure out how to stream them in. So if I can ask you to help organize that, that would be great. Thank you. Wisdom? Yeah. <coughs> Good morning, everyone. And my name is Wisdom Donko. I'm from Ghana. Uh, I work with the National Information Technology Agency and also the Ghana Open Data Initiative uh, project. Uh, I'm from the government sector. Um, I see uh, IGF um, as a bridging point um, considering, uh, uh, considering uh, the issues uh, of the developing country, especially Africa, uh, uh, and then what we need to do to solving some of our internet uh, problems and all that. So I see this IGF as a platform where uh, stakeholders come uh, to bridge the gap and also uh, see IGF as a vessel uh, of reaching the sustainable development goal, considering the many issues uh, within the various uh, economic sectors, uh, within the economic of uh, the developing countries. 
Thank you. Thank you, Wisdom. Omar? Thank you, Madam Chair, and good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Omar Mansour Ansari. I'm uh, from Afghanistan, uh, and I'm from private sector, uh, president of uh, Tech Nation, um, a technology company based in Kabul, Afghanistan. Uh, I'm also engaged with the ICANN business constituency uh, in the Afghanistan chapter of the Internet Society. Um, I've been working on the IGF um, Afghanistan uh, since last year. Um, my first introduction to the uh, IG was uh, 2003 when I participated at the WISIS uh, Phase 1 in Geneva as a uh, youth caucus member. And since then, I was uh, participating in the uh, WISIS meetings, uh, but I actively started participating at the IGF uh, since 2012 uh, when it was in Baku. Uh, I was appointed as MAC member uh, a couple of years back, so this is my third uh, in the last year uh, as a MAC member, but I'll be happy to contribute. Uh, we have a uh, strong interest uh, at Tech Nation and the community uh, in Afghanistan the, um, uh, who's active in the IG. Uh, strong interest in policy and programs uh, related to the IG. As we believe internet and access can help enhance lives and livelihoods and uh, production and productivity of uh, individuals and institutions. And uh, we see um, IGF as a great platform uh, to realize this end and also uh, collaborate, uh, exchange ideas um, and uh, knowledge and experiences with other uh, countries and nations. And that's why we would like to be um, actively participating as a private sector community, a business community, as well as um, a community from the developing countries. So we want to be the voice um, of the developing country in the private sector from the developing country. And that's the uh, primary reason we are happy to contribute to the global development. Thank you. Thank you, Omar. Xiaofeng? Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm Xiaofeng Tao. I'm, from, I'm a professor of Beijing University of Post and Telecommunication. And also a member of China Association for Science and Technology. And uh, I'm a new MEGA member. This is for my first year. But I have joined IGF uh, forum from the first beginning. So I'm very happy to work with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Paul? Good morning. Uh, my name is Paul Rowney. Uh, I'm with the uh, Africa ICT Alliance. I'm uh, one of the board members there and I'm representing them uh, here. Uh, the Africa ICT Alliance is an alliance of uh, business organizations across the continent that are trying to enhance ICTs and collaboration across the continent so that uh, we build and develop solutions uh, for ourselves on, on the continent. Uh, myself, my, my, my interests are in uh, financial and digital inclusion and uh, the work that I do takes me across the continent, uh, particularly on the uh, digital inclusion around uh, connectivity, last mile connectivity, etc. So from uh, the IGF, uh, on, on our continent we, we have many challenges and uh, we, we need our leaders to uh, better understand uh, what's happening on the continent and also listen to uh, the people and their advisors and the business and the civil society communities uh, to create a better society. And the IGF creates that uh, multi-stakeholder uh, forum that uh, enables the different stakeholders to engage at the same level, at the same platform, which is something we're not necessarily privy to in our own countries. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Paul. Rasha?
Good morning. My name is Rasha Abdullah. I'm a professor of uh, journalism and mass communication at the American University in Cairo. Um, so I come from Cairo, Egypt. Uh, this is my third year on the MAG. It's been a very nice experience, a huge uh, learning curve, and uh, <laughs> uh, hopefully uh, I've been productive in my own little way. Um, for me, the IJF is, is, a, is a perfect way to gather um, people who you might not uh, be able to get in the same room outside of such venue. Uh, I come from Egypt, which is at the intersection of uh, Africa and the Arab world, and we have a, a whole different set of challenges. Uh, and so it's, uh, it's I think, uh, interesting to bring that perspective to, um, to the table sometimes and just help people th see things from, uh, from a different perspective and, and see how we can all work together. Thank you. Thank you, Rasha. Rasha is very modest in her own little way, in her words, was to uh, drive the MAG to revamp the uh, selection process last year, which was uh, an enormous improvement and, and quite a big task as well. Ben? Hello. Um, I'm Ben Wallace. I'm British. Um, I've attended the last two IGF meetings, and I'm a new MAG member this year. Uh, I work for Microsoft. I'm representing the private sector. Um, I don't know if I'll manage 10 words, but I'll go for 20. Um, for me, the greatest value uh, of the IGF is the opportunity it provides to learn from others by hearing a, a really broad range of views and ideas on internet governance issues that I care about. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. That was about the closest we've come to 10 words, I think, so it certainly should be recognized. <laughs> Thank you. Tamea? Hello, everyone. Um, first of all, I'm very sorry. I seem to have lost my voice, so this is what I can manage today. Um, so I'll try to keep it short. Um, my name is Timeo Oshutu. I'm from Romania um, and Hungary um, by France, as I said a couple of days ago. <coughs> I work for the International Chamber of Commerce um, and a business action to support the Information Society Stiv of ICC, so on short ICC basis. Um, ICC is the world's uh, largest and most representative business organization with members of all sizes in all sectors uh, from about um, 100 countries around the world. Um, and for me, what IGF is, is um, a unique open forum um, for inclusive policy dialogue on issues of internet governance um, and a chance for all stakeholders to contribute freely um, to open discussions. Um, so this is why ICC Base is engaged and why we try to keep members engaged um, since the beginning of WISIS process back in 2003 um, on an array of uh, internet governance issues and uh, WISIS follow-up issues. So thank you. Thank you, Tamea. Miguel? Thank you very much, Chair. Good morning, everybody. My name is Miguel Candia. I'm a um, we're a returning MAG member for my second year. I'm uh, very happy to be. <laughs> and um, I'm a diplomat coming from Asuncion. I was up until recently posted here in Geneva. So now my, the nature of my work is going to change a bit. Um, I work for the Foreign Affairs Ministry. And I've been involved with IG issues pretty much since I got to Geneva six years ago. And uh, we, I've been growing in... Uh, in the knowledge of it uh, from year to year. Very happy to have this, uh, this uh, learning curve as well because it's, um, it is indeed uh, an issue that we have to take into account in every single situation we have now. Um, that would be it for presentation. I, I, I'm sure I'm going use to my, use my 10 words by just saying I'm using my 10 words. <laughs> but I want to say one thing. Um, we, we, we're in the moment that uh, the SDGs are taking over and uh, the whole world is coming together to try and realize them. Uh, and um, we have to understand that uh, internet is uh, the most important tool uh, to do so in a connecting world. And that's why we do believe that the IGF is a fundamental instance and a place to talk very freely, openly, about how we want to, uh, how we want to, and where we want to take the internet. Thank you.
Thank you, Miguel. Um, Pablo Bella just came up here to say that he had to leave to go to speak at the WISIS forum, um, but he's from Santiago, Chile, private sector, um, served two terms, and he's the Secretary General of the Association of Inter-American Telecom Enterprises, or ASEAT, and I believe he's actually physically located in Spain, but he came up here to sort of say his apologies, so I wanted to make sure it was sort of read into the record, if you will. I'm actually running out of my ability to actually even see pay place cards um, back there. So no, I know there's still more. We have Suman um, there, and but Suman. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. <coughs> uh, I'm Suman Amasavir from Bangladesh, and uh, I'm representing technical committee here, working for private sector, and also pretty much involved with the regional and local NOGs, and uh, pretty much involved with the EPINIC policy development process. Uh, before going to IGF, uh, I'd like to welcome all the new MAG members. And of course, I want to congratulate Sylvia Cadena for winning the WISIS Award 2018. And uh, regarding uh, IGF, uh, the internet actually became uh, a very powerful tool and it can really do more for the society. And of course, there are challenges that uh, it can be used for, for the harm for the society and for the people. So, Internet governance is very important and getting more and more important to us. Thank you. Thank you, Shiman. We also have in the, in the room um, uh, representatives from governments that were uh, previous host countries and representatives from um, some of the intergovernmental organizations as well. So as we've already included one or two of them here, um, and they do um, participate in a speaking capacity, um, well, not formally, being one of the 55 MAG members, but if they can introduce themselves so we go around as well, because you seem to be clustered in the back there a little bit. So Carlos, do you want to say a few words? Yeah, um, yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, good morning, and uh, um, uh, welcome to the uh, new MAG members. My name is Carlos Fonseca. Um, I work for the Brazilian government. I'm the uh, uh, Head of the Information Society Division at the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and uh, as Lynn said, I, I, I rep I'm representing the Brazilian government here. So um, Brazil has uh, hosted uh, actually two uh, meetings, IGF meetings, in two 2007 and 2015. Uh, not to mention Net Mundial, which was organized in 2014. Uh, I, I think I, I believe this this speaks a lot about. Uh, uh, the importance we attach to uh, the whole, you know, uh, IGF process, and uh, um, but if I if I might uh, just add a word for those who are not familiar with it, um, the Brazilian internet internet governance system has always been multi-stakeholder, multi but both in nature and, and in operational terms. Uh, the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee is about to celebrate his uh, its twenty-second year. Uh, and from its beginning in 1996, it has been integrated by members both of government, academia, civil society, technical community, and private sector. And and I think in many ways it's considered to be a model of multi-stakeholders. Multi so uh, uh, I think it, it, it speaks for itself and uh, how important for us is multi-stakeholders. And of course, uh, I believe the IGF is the quintessence of that. Uh, principle so um, I think that's 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 what I have to say thank you thank you Carlos Kenta uh, good morning uh, my name is Kenta Mochizuki uh, I'm Japanese uh, I'm a house counselor for Yahoo Japan Corporation uh, and I'm responsible for the internet governance uh, international data privacy and also the international threat uh, sorry <laughs> okay okay got it thank you um, yes and uh, actually I'm a returning from business community and uh, uh, in a previous IGF, uh, last year's IGF, I took the lead of the main session on digital economy. Uh, and also, I'm a member of the uh, multi-stakeholder steering group of uh, Asia Pacific Regional IGF. Also, the uh, member of the Japanese delegation to the working group on enhanced cooperation uh, held uh, from the 2016 to 2018. Um, uh, IGF matters to me because IGF is, uh, you know, a very great, important platform where multi-stakeholder, you know, come together to discuss wide range of uh, public policy issues pertaining to the internet. And uh, yeah, actually, that is for the you know, optimal rule and the policy, uh, rule and the policy making uh, as reflected in uh, IGF Code of Conduct. 
So I'm really, you know, very much looking forward to working with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kenta. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Good morning, everybody. My name is Maricela Munoz from Costa Rica. I'm based out of Geneva, uh, the permanent mission of Costa Rica to the UN. I am a new MAC member, so thank you for welcoming me here today. Um, in a few words, we believe that internet and other digital advancements are here not only to stay, but to continue shaping our lives, uh, including our security, both as individuals and as a society. And of course, uh, in that whole context, uh, the Agenda 2030. So um, I believe that in that particular uh, juncture, the IGF is the multi-stakeholder platform that enable us to share best practices, knowledge, experiences, principles, uh, and for us to build some commonalities around the governance of internet. Thank you. Thank you, Marcella. I'm even losing track now of the depths of the rows in the in the back. Um, yes, I think is it Valentin is next. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Valentina Sharpi. I represent the European Commission here. We are a um, strongly support member of the MAG and of the IGF, which we for long now supported both financially and uh, morally by participating to the MAG meeting and also to the IGF itself. And I'm proud to say that uh, the last IGF in Geneva, also our commissioner uh, participated, so to, to show the commitment at very high level that the European Commission has towards internet governance. And we will continue to do so because we believe the, the IGF is the only truly multi-stakeholder platform that can convey different policy option and debate and all the stakeholders together to debate policy issue. Thank you. Thank you for supporting such a large delegation for the last IGF as well and for the, the statement um, in support of the IGF at, at the end. That was helpful. Christina, I think you're next. Um, thank you. My name is Christina Arida uh, and I work for the National Telecom Regulatory Authority of Egypt. I'm um, here representing the government of Egypt as a former host. We hosted the IGF in 2019 and um, we continue to, uh, to, to value the IGF as a very important uh, platform uh, for collaboration and for dialogue on internet governance and internet uh, policies on a global level, but we also very much value the processes of national and regional IGFs, which uh, we think are increasingly providing um, a space for local and uh, regional uh, dialogue and collaboration, but as also an opportunity for to bring up grassroots perspective to the global internet uh, governance uh, agenda. So, and congratulations uh, to your uh, to your uh, appointment, reappointment, uh, Lynn. It's it's a pleasure to have you again, and congratulations to new mem uh, colleagues of the member uh, of the bank. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Concettina. Okay, thanks, Chair, and um, good morning to everybody. My name is uh, Concettina Cassa. I am uh, from Italy. I work from, uh, for AGIT, that is the um, Digital Italy Agency of uh, Prime Minister Office, so I represent the government. I'm a newcomer, and I'm uh, very happy and proud to be part of uh, MAG committee. So about um, the meaning of IGF, I think um, IGF is um, actually a, a very good way to have the opportunity uh, to debate uh, internet governance issues in an uh, open, transparent, and uh, multi-costicolder way. And uh, I think it makes the difference because um, you can uh, debate in an uh, equal footing. So I think this is the best way to share ideas yeah. and also to address internet governance issues. Okay. Thank you, Concettina. Just as a heads up, we're getting down to the last one or two individuals in the room here, in which case I'll come back to you, Simon, because I think you weren't here, and then we'll go to the online um, participants so they can get prepared Good morning. as well. Um, okay, Samuel, and then Giacomo will go back to you. Uh, thank you, Chair, for giving me the floor. My name is uh, Ndicho Bambu Samuel. I am from Cameroon, and I'm working with the Ministry of External Relations. And uh, um, I'm a second uh, year ma member. It's an honor for me to be here, and I want to welcome first all the new MAC members. 
the IGF is, an, is a very important uh, platform where government, where civil society, where the technical uh, body comes together to discuss everything, uh, internet and governance. My greatest uh, ambition uh, coming onto the MAC was to be able to get my government at the national level uh, to open up uh, to talk more on internet governance, something that they have always held as a monopoly. And uh, I am happy that uh, last year during the, the IGF, I was able to get the Ministry of Communication to come on board. And I'm hoping that the governments of many other conservative uh, countries should be able to do the same so that uh, the, the IGF becomes a holistic and a very uh, multi-stakeholder community for everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Samuel. Shakamo? Yes, thank you, Chair, for the floor. Um, I'm here representing the EBU, European Broadcasting Union, and World Broadcasting Union. Uh, we are involved in this process since 2003. So the cake of yesterday night of 15 years, I've, I think, was also for us. Uh, I'm glad for that. Um, we support the IGF process uh, since many years, uh, taking care of the um, host broadcasting and supporting the communication. And I hope that we will have um, later some moment to talk about what we did this year. Um, and um, of course, we look forward the changes and the improvement that um, has been discussed uh, and longly debated all around these years in order to make of the IGF something more um, efficient and more um, useful for the debate on the internet governance. Thank you. Thank you, Giacomo. I think we've hit every um, MAG member or host country member or IGO rep here um, with us physically. So let's move to the online queue. And this will be a heads up to Thomas if it's three or four people and then you're up. Alejandra, I think we're hoping you're unmuted and unmuted. Alejandra, can you try speaking now? I think you are unmuted. Well, let's come back to Alejandra in a moment then. Um, and who was next up, Natasha? Natasha, you have the floor. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? We can, yes. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Natasha Glover from Croatia, uh, from Croatian Academic and Research Network, and I represent the government stakeholders. And in our Croatian IGF initiative that exists for three years now, we managed to involve multi-stakeholder community and experts to debate about the various internet-related issues. And I'm very proud to be a new MAG member and for being in position to more actively participate in shaping the future of the internet, as well as to expand our understanding of the complex internet governance processes and to broaden space for ideas exchange on important internet governance matters. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you so much for, for participating online as well. I said I know that's not not easy. Um, should we try Alejandra again? And then I think, it w was it Wanawit who was next? Alejandra? Alejandra? 
Alejandro, can you try speaking? Why don't we move to Wanawit then and come back to Alejandra? So I'm not quite sure. Do they have to be unmuted here? Should we stay with? No, they can unmute from there as well. Okay, well, let's move to um, uh, Wanawit. And I'm not seeing anything from Wanawit there at the moment. So, Miguel? No, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Hello, my name is Miguel Ignacio Estrada. I am from Argentina. Uh, I am actually, I am the general manager of Black PLD. It's a Latin American and Caribbean domains, of top level domains association, or organization, if you think. Um, I've been in, in the MAC for two years now. Uh, I was, I've been working in the new session format working group with, with many of you. And also, together with Rachel, uh, we've been working in the um, DPF for local content. And we intend to continue that in this year. Uh, it's been my, my last one. Thank you very much. Thank you, Miguel. Miguel's obviously made many contributions, but he's um, really been the champion for two years now of piloting new session formats within the MAG, which has been really well received and much appreciated his work. Um, let's see if we can go back um, either to Alejandra or Wanawit, and if that doesn't work, <coughs> we will offline um, ask them if they can just send in a couple of remarks so we make sure it's actually um, captured for everyone. Alejandra? We're still not hearing Alejandra, and Wanawit has put a note in the chat room saying that he's not able to um, connect at the moment. And is that um, everybody from the online participation, Anya? There's a lot of people in the WebEx room, but a lot of them are here in the room. <laughs> and I think Jennifer had actually asked to um, do an introduction for Gianna, who's not able to be here. Or did I misunderstand? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Gian Soriano is also a new incoming MAG member. I've asked her to prepare a, l a very short introduction. I'm still receiving <coughs> it from her. So when that comes through, it would be very nice if the Chair could read it out for her and have it on the record. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. And Alejandra is saying she has problems, so we will um, try and fix those problems later. I want to thank everybody for um, the introductions. Um, they were obviously very, very thoughtful in terms of why this matters to you. I know it takes some time, but it's just incredibly important that we actually do it. The work we do, for the most part, is offline. Um, it actually requires a lot of uh, collaboration, cooperation, and to the extent we have at least some sort of depth in our, our relationships and understanding of what's important to everybody and where they've come from. I think it actually helps with the, the discussions going forward. So I want to thank everybody for the time. Um, I don't think, Tamea, do you have? Thank you. Um, just a quick word to introduce a colleague, um, a fellow business representative of the MAG, Christoph Steck from Telefonica, who is uh, on his way over from Madrid. Um, so he's going to join us later on um, today. 
um, who's been very active um, in, with the basis membership on um, all our activities in IGF in the past couple of years, um, just to convey his uh, thanks, and uh, he's looking forward to working with all of us here. Thank you. Um, and I'll just say a few words about me as well. Um, I, this is my third year as the chair. I had previously served one year formally as MAG. Um, I had um, several positions in the private sector covering over a decade um, between digital equipment, actually maybe significantly more than that, between digital equipment, um, AT&T, and uh, General Electric in the very beginning. And then I was the president and CEO of the Internet Society, or ISOC, for um, 14 years. And that finished um, a few years ago and brought me to the, to the, um, to the position. I actually have participated um, in every one of the WISIS 1, WISIS 2, and the prep class. All of those activities were several weeks long and, and very intense. Um, I think they've stood the community really well because it gave us a common language and a common set of reference, um, whether it's the, the Geneva documents or the Tunis Agenda. And I have been to every one of the IGFs as well. So um, that's just by way of a, a quick background. I'd now like to introduce. Um, can I just say oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes, sorry. Um. <clears throat> Um, in connection with this uh, introductions on our website, we do have the list of MAG members and also a short, uh, yeah, I think you can call it a biography of them. Um, so I would like to kindly request you to look at yours and if you think it needs updating or if it's actually missing, uh, could you please send a short paragraph to um, Anya and she can update it for you. So that's at anya.gengo at, should I say it, uh, un.org. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Changatai. Yes, exactly. Do you want a few words of introduction for yourself as well? You've been, you're an institution. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, my name is Changatai Masango. Um, <laughs> I've been with Internet Governance I don't know, um, my first introduction was, I think, in during... In teens? Yes, in my <laughs> teens. Um, I was, first of all, doing some research uh, during the first stage of the um, WISIS in, in Geneva, and then I came to the working group on internet governance um, in the secretariat there. And that transitioned to um, the Secretariat of the Internet Governance Forum. And I've been here since the genesis, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's good enough, right? <laughs> Where are you from? Oh, Tunis. yes. I'm from Zimbabwe. Yeah. <laughs> And one um, quick, maybe we could actually add pictures to the bios that are on the website as well. I mean, again, it's just another dimension of really helping people to, to kind of connect um, would be helpful. So if you could send that in. I don't know if you need any special specs or something, but Luis can make that clear and, and we'll send that in. So without further ado, because I'm sure Thomas is just, you know, itching to get into it. This is Ambassador Thomas Schneider. Um, he is Vice Director of the Swiss Federal Office of Communications and heads the International Relations Service there. Um, Thomas, maybe you could just say a few words as well about sort of your um, history and experience here and activities. I said yesterday that the Swiss government has been so very, very supportive of Internet governance since the very earliest days and, and frankly ahead of even the formal WISIS summits and things. And, They've been steady and stalwart and um, consistently here with us and, and always much appreciated. And that, you know, kind of culminated as well, I think, with uh, them stepping to host the uh, IGF last year here in Geneva. Thank you, Lynn. Um, yes, uh, as you said, um, my name is Thomas Schneider. Um, I've not been there when the internet was created, but I've been, <laughs> I've been in the internet governance debate, a part of it since the Big Bang uh, that happened around the late 90s, early, early uh, 2000s. And I've been working at Ofcom since 2003 at that time, 
as the right, right hand of Mark Foro, who was the uh, state secretary that was responsible for organizing, preparing, and negotiating the first phase of WISIS. Um, I'm one of those who has been to all the 12 IGFs so far, and um, I'm still convinced that the IGF is something that is unique and needs to be not only preserved, but actually strengthened and, 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 and uh, further developed. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll stop here because uh, <laughs> I think we have to uh, move on to substance. So I've been asked to, to share some, some uh, of our experience as host country of last year's uh, IGF with you. We have a presentation, a PowerPoint that is ready to be put on the screen for this. You've already heard some remarks by my colleague Jorge Cancio uh, yesterday uh, in the open consultation. This presentation is, is focusing more on the, uh, let's say, uh, our experience uh, with concrete issues and, and, and proposals for improvement. Um, so it's uh, slightly different than, than uh, what Jorge uh, told you yesterday, but of course it follows the same, the same logic. So I'm the master of disaster. I can go up and down or left and right. Okay. <coughs> um, yeah, these are lessons learned and some suggestions uh, by us. So again, as I said, um, we think that the IGF is unique, uh, not only because of its bottom-up process, but also because it has probably the broadest range of diversity of, of people that get together uh, from very, with very different backgrounds. And the fact that um, we had the opportunity to have the IGF in Geneva last year with its 30 whatever the exact number is of IGOs, intergovernmental institutions, and hundreds of NGOs and think tanks and private institutions that in one way or another deal with internet governance issues. Of course, one of the key goals for us was to try and help uh, to break the silos between these institutions and, and connect people, get them into the IGF, uh, thus enrich the, the, the already wide range of, of people that uh, have been participating uh, so that was one of the of the key goals. We were also trying to help um, with uh, introducing some innovations as those who have been into this discussion for uh, a longer period know that there has been several or every year we have the discussion on how to improve, how to further develop the IGF and there's lots of ideas. Um, and not everything is consensual. Some people are more cautious than others, and uh, it has been back and forth with what kind of output, tangible output or less tangible output. For instance, um, the issue of interactivity is, is one that is, and the formats that would be more uh, uh, promoting interactivity is something that, that is also a constant hot topic at, at the IGF. Um, we have managed to uh, introduce something that has not happened before at the IGF. Uh, usually there had been at the opening session or at the opening afternoon, there had been uh, speeches of, of important uh, representatives of all stakeholders, one after the other. And we've asked our president whether she would be willing to do something slightly different and engage in a more interactive dialogue. So we actually, and she was very happy to, to do that. So we had, uh, on on uh, Monday afternoon in December, we had a, a an interactive roundtable with about 10 or 12 people to to discuss in a more free and more interactive and more spontaneous way so, uh, uh, some key questions. And we also then had on the second day in the morning another interactive high-level session um, that was uh, chaired by by our Director General, the Director General of Ofcom. And we think that under the feedback that we got, we think that this is something that actually uh, was, was appreciated by the panelists themselves, but also by the audience that instead of, of having a series of 20, 30 speeches uh, that are not, uh, not uh, related to each other, to try and also involve the, the um, high-level people into a, an exchange, a substantive exchange on some issues. We hope, of course, that this will be used as an experience that will be continued and, and further expanded. Then a second thing is the, uh, what you call the Geneva messages, is something that um, uh, is also an attempt to, to uh, 
create or produce a more tangible outcome that people can use, the ones that have been participating at the discussions, but also the ones that have not been participating at the discussions, that they can use to take home, to share with others, to, to when they go back in their silos where decisions are taken, that they can refer to the the most obvious trends or, or, or elements of the discussions uh, from the IGF. So in addition to the chairman's summary, which is uh, 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 a detailed but very descriptive report that is less useful to, to, to point at a particular, uh, 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 particular trend or a particular element on an issue where everybody seems to agree or everybody seems to disagree, <clears throat> we try to, to use the messages or, or offer the messages so that you have a few bullet points that you can refer to whenever a, 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 an issue is discussed elsewhere and you can say, well, at the IGF, everybody wanted to go in this direction or uh, this is the next thing that should be done, as, as people thought in, in the IGF. So we really hope that this is something that is useful uh, for everybody to, to, to uh, make reference to the discussion and take and continue the discussions that were held at the IGF for, for the, uh, in other fora. We didn't invent this. This was actually something that the European Dialogue on Internet Governance, the Eurodic, has done since the beginning, that also the German IGF, the Swiss IGF, and others are doing. Um, and these, these messages are not negotiated. So we, we, all of these messages try to avoid that instead of listening uh, to each other and trying to uh, understand each other, that people start negotiating outcome text. This is definitely not the plan. So it, it is a transparent process <clears throat> in the sense that who's drafting the messages, who's taking the responsibility to, to produce them immediately after the meeting as a best effort to just mirror the discussion and, and the state where the discussion is. We're also uh, uh, hopeful that this is, is, is being seen as, as, a, as a value added to the IGF uh, as, a, as a form of hopefully tangible and useful uh, outcome. <clears throat> then, of course, um, <clears throat> Uh, another another issue for us was to, to, to show that Geneva, with all the institutions that deal with different aspects of, of our digital governments from from climate issues to, to health issues to labor issues to what have you, that uh, actually people get aware of the potential that is here in Geneva and they uh, make the best use of it. And of course, uh, uh, a big thanks to uh, all the MAC members, to the MAC chair, uh, and to the Secretariat that uh, everybody was working extremely hard uh, to make the IGF 2017 uh, happen. So now to some suggestions for, for the future. Uh, one of the challenges is that, and we also experienced this, that even in Geneva not everybody knew that the IGF exists when we started to, to talk to people about the IGF. So we need to continue to raise the profile of the IGF and, and the communication. Uh, the, when the IGF started in, in 20, uh, 2006 in Athens, this was one of the only uh, global fora that was di discussing internet issues. Now we have hundreds and hundreds of conferences uh, that all somehow uh, deal with, with uh, digital governance or internet governance. But the IGF is different and we need to explain to people, or is unique, we need to be able to better explain this to the people. We need to explain them that this is not a conference like most others where somebody sets the agenda in a small group, invites that the organizers would like to see there, define the, define the issues, but this is a bottom-up process where everything that uh, gets enough traction is considered to be important by the community will get a space. So there's no, there's no agenda setting from above, but the agenda setting is from, from, uh, from the experts in the field. That makes a huge difference because new issues will pop up and, and often f pop up first at an IGF and as ha it has been said by others, shape the agenda of the other and, and, and prepare the direction of the discussion of follow-up discussions in other fora. And this is not to be underestimated. It, the IGF is not a decision-making body, but it's also not just a talk shop where people meet and, 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 and uh, uh, at receptions and talk. It's actually the, in our view, the agenda-shaping uh, uh, process for all IG debates. And this is something that we should, in order to promote the relevance of the IGF, in order to attract uh, uh, the right people and to, to uh, attract more funding, we'll get to that later, this is something that we need to be 
communicating better, all of us and, and the ones uh, that are here, the people in the MAC, the people that are at the core of the IGF process, we have a key role in communicating this. Um, so this is probably the most, the most important learning for us that, that we still need to do better in communicating what the IGF is about, how it's different and what the concrete unique value added of the IGF is. And of course, the presence of the UN Secretary General and other high-level people helps normally to, to attract attention, attract resources, and so on and so forth. And, and uh, we also were trying hard to, to focus to the extent we could uh, to shape the issues in a way that politicians, citizens, businesses uh, would consider them relevant for them. So it, of course, some aspects are, of internet governance are technical but they have economic, political, social aspects to it. And if you put them in the front uh, uh, when you communicate, uh, normally it's easier for people to realize, aha, this is not just a technical issue that I don't have to care, but this is actually having an impact on myself, on the people that I want to, to vote for me or on the, the businesses that I'm, that I'm conducting. So this is also something uh, that, that is very important, we think. So as I said, the outreach can and should be enhanced. This does not cost a lot of money resources, but it's work in the sense that you need to communicate, you need to talk to people, you need to explain things in a way that they understand it. Uh, again, we have a, a Geneva is a good thing, a place to do that. There's a, a close to 200 diplomatic missions here, IGOs, NGOs, and so on. So Geneva can be used for this, but of course that should go beyond Geneva and, and everybody should use uh, their net. Uh, to, to, to reach out to the people and explain them why they should participate at the IGF, and not just at the global, but actually at the regional and national ones too, because of this unique bottom-up and uh, inclusive approach. Um, more systematic inclusion of uh, NRIs is something that we've also debated since the, since the NRIs basically emerged. This is also a debate in the juridic context. Um, everybody's willing to, to work together more closely to coordinate, but then often people don't have the time, they don't have the resources to actually correspond uh, with each other. And, and uh, several ideas have been floated around to how to facilitate communication, coordination or interaction, whatever you call it. Um, in the end, the essence of this, the more the more united or, or, or jointly the, the, the NRIs work with the IGF, the more they are mutually supportive because this is a network that, that, uh, that has synergies, of course, and, and, and scale effects. And it also helps to, to uh, communicate the, on national and regional level what is the nature, what is the, the value added, uh, the spirit of the IGF. So, of course, this is something that all means, all ideas should, should be used to, to in, uh, enhance this interaction. Then the mix of stakeholders, um, something that is also a, 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 a constant uh, hit in the discussions is the, is the stakeholder diversity in, 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 the, in the sessions. We've seen some, or we've heard from many people that uh, some sessions there were maybe more, way more civil society people than, than, than people from other stakeholders. And, 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 and then in, in other sessions it was, it was uh, the other way around. And, and how to try and encourage um, actors that want to discuss the same issue, but they want to discuss it from their angle with the people that they think that they support, maybe their vision or their angle. And then you have like three, four, five, six workshops on the same issue. But again, everyone in their silos this is also something that, that ha we have been debating for, for years. And also there we really have to try to encourage, incite people to get together and, and cross these silos because the, the discussions benefit if you have different views and, and, and stakeholders that normally do not cooperate, who do not work together. If you put them in the same session, normally this is where, where innovative ideas emerge because you hear things that you have not uh, heard before from from the people that you normally are used to listen to this so this is something that I would urge you to have a little courage and and urge people to work together and not just everybody should do their workshop but actually try and do things together with with your opponents or whatever you call them people that don't share your views but this is normally where people learn learn something 
<coughs> so um, yeah, these are a, a few more points. Um, it is always a challenge that, that you, you spend um, m much time preparing, logistically preparing the, 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 the flow of, of a session and so on, uh, but there's not enough time to actually concentrate on the substance and try and make sure that the discussion this year is not the same as last year and the year before the, uh, the last year. So to try and go more in depth into a topic and not just scratch the surface is something that is easily said, it's less easy done. It would require normally some, some preparation so that, that people maybe put out documents or, or provocative uh, theses um, out uh, before the meeting so that people do not start from zero during this and, and, and during 60 or 90 or whatever minutes, but that you actually, uh, or, or you go back to what has been discussed last year to take the messages for instance and, and see like how has, a, has an issue developed in, 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 in the meantime. So they're also there, it's, it's, it's not so easy, but we can do better in, in trying to go more in depth uh, with, with, with the sessions or with the, with the topics, with the issues. And, and that goes uh, together with maybe creating in the, in the framework of, of the multi-year, the discussion on the multi-year program to try and have continued debates about issues that we know they will be on the agenda again the next year and so on, so that we really try to, to not, not do everything uh, in the same way all over again every year, but actually follow up on the previous discussions and create work tracks, substantive work tracks, at least on the priority issues that we know that they will come up. Um, then uh, another thing that we learned in, in Eurodig, in Eurodig we also, uh, in the beginning, uh, made call for proposals for workshops and had the problem that everybody wanted to have their workshop approved in the way they proposed it. And then we switched and we did not call for workshops anymore, for sessions, but we were just calling for issues. And then we basically forced the people that were wanting to discuss the same issues, we forced them to get together and organize the sessions together. And this worked pretty well. And people are now used to that they, it's not, they will not run their own show, but they will run a, a, sh a joint show with others or a shared show and, and this is something that we could think about on focusing more on issues and then gather people around the issues and less asking for concrete workshops where everybody is like why did I not get the workshop but the other ones got it and these discussions would also maybe be be diminished and 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 then of course another important thing is is uh, highlighting the linkages to the, the 2030 agenda which which clearly are, are there with regard to discussion formats um, also, the, the less panelists you have on a stage or whatever you call it, the more time is there normally to interact with the audience. And normally you have a large number of people that uh, are also experts in, that are sitting in the audience. And often it happens that it's somehow the same people that end up being panelists uh, in, in many, in many uh, occasions. So, for instance, what we, what we do on, on our national level at the Swiss IGF is we have no panelists at all. We just told the Swiss that this is the system of the IGF, that there are no panelists. We just have two short entry statements and then the whole audience is involved in the discussion. And this is producing, again, much more innovation, much more new ideas than if you have uh, 10 panelists that will take speaking time and, and, and less interaction. So, again, a, an urge for trying to to go as interactive as you can and also have the courage to say we have very important people but we don't call them panelists, we don't separate them from the rest of the participants, you may call them key participants whatsoever and let everybody in the audience be part of the discussion. So this is something that, that is, is also uh, and, and the experience also here at the WISIS forum, uh, if you have 10 panelists uh, and no time to, to, to not even give the mic to, to one person in the audience. I don't think that this is the most, uh, the most effective way of using the, the, in the crowd intelligence that, is intelligence that is present in the room. The other issue is, is, is whether, this is also not a new, not a new discussion, whether the three hour uh, length of the main sessions is, is something that we may try something different and maybe use two hours for some issues, use one hour or use 90 minutes, but that is also depends on the issue, depends on, on, where, uh, on the maturity of the discussion of an issue or how narrow or how broad an issue is. So that, that is something that, of course, uh, yeah, should and will be reconsidered. 
<clears throat> with regard to the, to the tangibility and usability of the outcome, I already explained uh, uh, the, the messages that we were able to introduce last year, and we'll hope that they will that this system will be continued. Um, the Geneva Internet Platform, uh, which is a capacity building initiative, they uh, were very uh, uh, supportive and, and, and helped us with formulating the messages and, and going to all the sessions. Of course, uh, the GIP is also at the disposal of, of future uh, IGF meetings to, to be used uh, with their great network that they can help together the, the elements uh, for, for producing a tangible outcome. Uh, they also do daily reporting, for instance, uh, on, on, on the WISIS forum here uh, on, on their Digital Watch uh, Observatory. So, um, yeah, and then, uh, of course, uh, the network c can be used and should be used to, to enhance and disseminate uh, uh, the work, the best practices. Also there, um, the more simple the language and the communication of the best practice for of the of the dynamic collisions and so on is the easier people uh, will get access to it will be able to use it will be able to participate if things are written in 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 long sentences in 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 long if you get long texts many people don't have the time to try and find out what this is about so the more accessible we communicate the lower the threshold for people to participate and the higher the impact is that that we get um yeah, improving information sources, again, the GIP is, uh, is at the disposal. There are other, there are other uh, uh, structures that, that can be used to, to, to um, yeah, help communicating, share, spread news, get feedback, and so on and so forth. With regard to the long-term planning, uh, uh, yeah, we really need to, to spend more resources on the multi-year strategy to how to make sure that the uh, we don't just try and organize an annual event and, and spend most of the time organizing the event, getting the people in, but had, don't have enough resources to try and strategically uh, develop an issue or develop the discussion on an issue together with, with other partners. So this is really something that, that we think is, is fundamental. Of course, if you have a host country, it's good to communicate it as soon as possible, but I don't think we need to discuss this. We are, we are, this is not all in, in our hands. And, and we also think that it w we would uh, benefit from a closer cooperation also on substance, on, on strategies, not just on, exchange, on exchanging logistical experience, which is something that works very nicely, but also on the strategy to in, in maybe uh, involve the, the former current and future hosts also more, more, more on a strategic level, like where did, does the IGF want to go, what do we want to achieve with the IGF, and how can we cooperate more efficiently to achieve that. So again, uh, this is not a new discussion. We ha have been having this uh, every year, and we ha have been able to introduce and develop the IGF in, in, in significantly in many ways since it, its beginning. We know that some things work better, others work less. Uh, we know what we could do differently. Um, so. This is all fine. There's only one challenge because we can ask for improvements all day long if we don't have the money and the resources to actually invite more young people to communicate better, to what have you, uh, build 10 uh, uh, ropes for, for, for uh, different security accesses and all these things. If we don't have the resources, this is all wishful thinking and we can continue the same and complain about the same things uh, year by year. So we really need to make sure that the IGF, the Secretariat, the host countries, all the structures get the funding that they need. And I don't think that the problem is that the funding is not there because governments, businesses and also civil society spend millions and millions for other things. The problem, again, is communication. It's communication that we are not good enough in explaining why it is useful or necessary to fund the IGF properly, <clears throat> to spend resources on the IGF. As people say, well, you don't take decisions, you don't have 50,000 ministers and CEOs in your meetings and so on and so forth. Yes. We don't take decisions, but there's a value added to not to listening to each other first and then taking the decisions in other fora. But we need to explain this to people, why the IGF is, is unique, why it needs to be properly resourced, because only then we can uh, uh, fully 
uh, yeah, sees the, the potential that the IGF has. So um, I'm inviting everybody to, to join the effort in trying to communicate better and then also the effort in, in encouraging everybody to raise funds, to look for, for resources, because the more we have, the more we can actually use them to, to make the IGF better. So of course we will also do our best and continue to be part of this exercise in every way we can. That's it for the time being. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thomas. I think those slides have been, well, we had them, so if they're not posted, we'll post them. And, and you know, they've been shared with the online participants as well. Right, so as I said yesterday, we have an awful lot of work to do over the next um, two days, um, closely coming up on a day and a half here. Um, the stakes are really high. I mean, not only are we all living in a really challenging environment geopolitically, um, certainly the issues um, in front of us um, that we're confronting in the internet space or internet governance space are ever more challenging and ever more complex and frankly, much more broadly affecting um, us on a daily basis and society um, generally and, and broadly. The as we've heard a couple times is the only truly equal-footed, multi-stakeholder process. And we need to find a way to make more of that. Um, it's the only process that is also open, that is inclusive, and we can always do more, um, certainly, but to address international public policy issues. That's what we're here for at the end of the day. Um, and at the same time, um, certainly over the last few years, there have been more and more fora and commission and other efforts popping up, which I think um, diffuses energy and dilutes energy and attention um, occasionally. And in fact, we heard that over the last couple of days of the WISIS Forum and several of the panels that I either participated or had reported <laughs> to me. Um, so I think this is a time for the IGF to really take advantage of its uniqueness and frankly, it's longevity. We've been here for 13 years now, and prior to that, three or four years of a really extensive WISIS I and WISIS II process. That's almost two decades of actually dealing with and trying to understand internet governance issues and multi-stakeholder, bottom-up, consensus-based, open processes. That, as I said yesterday, seem like it would be really straightforward, but have their own set of complexities and really are quite, quite nuanced as well. Um, across the IGF ecosystem, we have tremendous knowledge really tremendous, tremendous knowledge. We have tremendous reach. And when I say the ecosystem, I don't mean just the annual meetings and the DCs and the BBF. Obviously, we're talking about the NRIs. We're talking about the major policy initiatives. We're talking about a lot of our other collaborative relationships with some of the other organizations we work for. I mean, I could have said unparalleled, and it would have been just as true. Unparalleled knowledge, unparalleled reach, and unparalleled passion for what we're doing here. So um, we have truly, truly global, multi-stakeholder community. One, again, that I don't think is matched in any other process that I see in the UN or in other IGO efforts. Although, of course, many of them claim to be quite multi-stakeholder. I think fundamentally there's still a, a lot of difference between those processes and um, our processes and, and expectations of our participants. We have the best all-round perspective of the technical, economic, societal, and political challenges we're facing. And we have a very strong and very knowledgeable civil society participation in our efforts. And I actually think that's something we really need to be proud of. And you know, over the last couple of years, there have been an awful lot of discussions in civil society and the fact that civil society is the bulk of the workshop proposals that come in and the participants. And you know, at the end of the day, we're all civil society. When we leave our day jobs behind and we go home and we start doing something on the internet, we're doing that in a civil society capacity. And to me, if we're concerned over an imbalance or an overrepresentation of one group in our work, the only reasonable thing you can do is step up the participation of those other groups. It's the only reasonable thing. So the MAG really needs to, for a few years now, we've talked about the need to actually bring in more um, private sector and more government participation. We sometimes say senior policymakers because obviously it's not just governments. We really need to make that kind of a, a, a cause, a real cause in everything we do, everybody we talk to, all of the work we do. Um, it's not just outreach and it's not just slightly better materials or more materials. 
You really have to have a passion for pulling those other communities into the work. Um, I mean, it's like we've heard a, a lot through um, certainly the stock taking and the open mic sessions at the end of the last IGF, frankly, the end of uh, most of the, <laughs> the IGFs, the stock taking formal submissions, the compilation the Secretariat did, um, statements and calls for reform, such as from the Internet Society, um, you know, comments from the Dutch government. A whole host of people are actually calling for the IGF and the MAG to step up and really look at the IGF and its role in these kind of internet governance issues. Um, so I think one thing I'm not quite sure how to gauge is what the appetite is of the MAG and the community, because the MAG is really here representing the community, um, what the appetite is for making some of those changes. We've had some really specific suggestions. We've had suggestions such as um, less tracks, less sessions, less topics. Sometimes people say more focus or they'll say prioritization. We've had um, suggestions that we um, take a, a more kind of collective look at topics and figure out a way to stream them so that they build on each other. We've had suggestions of um, setting two sides a day, uh, two days of the IGF meeting aside to deal with just a small number of topics, but to really do that in a very um, sort of uh, thoughtful way with intent leading towards some sort of um, output or you know some sort of position or something that actually comes, something we can take away from these discussions. We can say we actually helped advance these set of discussions for the world at the IGF here. Um, we've had um, suggestions in all sorts of forums, including some of the things that I heard in the Working Group on Enhanced Cooperation, that we find a way to um, much more deeply and broadly support um, government participation um, in the IGF. In the Working Group on Enhanced Cooperation, there was quite a discussion on whether or not there ought to be um, uh, special outreach, um, special sessions uh, for governments, um, processes where we ask the governments what would be of interest to them, what would they like to engage on, and find a way to actually pull that in, in a multi-stakeholder fashion, so that there's that level of engagement here at an IGF. Some of those ideas, we've had lots of other ideas um, as well. What we've done in the past years, I think, is sort of tinkered a little bit with the formats. We introduced some new session formats. We encouraged fewer panels, we encourage more interaction, we try to encourage more diversity. We, we did things to, to sort of enliven um, the sessions at the IGF more. But I don't think many of those actually focused on kind of content, topic, or substance, or intent almost. You know, if, 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 the, if the MAG and the community are spending all the resources and efforts we're spending to pull together an IGF every year, you know, what, what's our in intent? What do we, you know, I, I don't think it can just be about there were some good discussions, and obviously we're much more than that. But, but I think there needs to be, you know, we're, we're helping the world understand and get to grasp with some, some particular issues or some portions of some of these issues. But, uh, I mean, I'm going to stop now and I think just open it up to the MAG members. I'm not quite sure what, what kind of our appetite is for taking on some of the suggestions that we've heard and, and maybe more radically um, thinking about what that annual meeting is. The MAG has responsibilities beyond the annual meeting as well. Obviously, we charter best practice forums, for instance. We should figure out which ones of those would be helpful. Um, we um, also have had a major intersessional policy initiative called Connecting and Enabling the Next Billions. <coughs> we've had that for three years. Um, is that appropriate to continue? Is that the right priority? Should there be a different set of um, initiatives? And then, um, of course, we have the you know ongoing, um, I think, request from all parties to figure out how we can uh, collaborate more with the DC efforts and the NRI efforts that are both such critical pieces of our of our ecosystem here. But um, you know. Normally at this point, we'd be starting a discussion on themes and things, and I just think that's too premature, and I think that's just gonna lead us back down to a track where we tinker a little bit with the formats we had before. So I'd just like to try a little bit of an experiment here and, and kind of ask the MAG to, to help all of you 
because I'm here just to support this effort. I am not driving the effort. It's not my decision. It is the decision of the MAG and the community. But I'm trying to figure out how to help process a discussion that helps gauge what the MAG's appetite and through that what the IGF community's appetite is for a more radical um, kind of thinking about what the IGF annual meeting at this point in time is meant to accomplish and what we want to, to do with that. So with that, I'll open the floor. We do want to use the speaking cues so we can support the online participation in a, a really equitable way with um, those here physically, which means I need to make sure I pull it up. So we have, um, well, you can, um, can we? It's still working on it. Okay. <coughs> uh, sorry, that little, we're just trying to figure out what we're doing with all the slides in the room so that people can see the difference. So we actually have the speaking queue up. We have um, a few people in. Um, Jennifer and Mamadou are the next two. So we'll start with Jennifer and then go through the, the rest. Jennifer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, with your indulgence, I'm actually going to read out the introduction sent in by Gian Soriano, the incoming MAG member, if that's okay. Sure, just do it with enthusiasm so we don't lose any momentum. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, so Gian Soriano is an incoming MAG member. She is from NetMission.Asia, um, also the Youth Internet Governance of Asia Pacific. She's from civil society. Um, her origin is from the Philippines, and to her, why the IGF matters. Um, the IGF provides a platform for young people to discuss internet issues in local, regional, and national levels. She believes that as youth, these issues are of concern and we want to address and be engaged in it. Bianca Ho, MAG member from the 2014 to 2017, was her mentor in the IG process and she was also a founding member of the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance and also a NetMission.Asia um, ambassador. And she looks forward to continuing providing the youth perspective to the MAG. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jennifer. So we have Mamadou in the queue. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you, Thomas, for your report. On this, I would like to echo to echo Thomas' remark on communication issues within, within IGF. For this, I would like to suggest, if possible, and if it is not the case already, to set IGF booth during internet governance events like ICON meetings or African Internet Governance Summit to explain and raise awareness on IGF. I think also working groups on outreach communication has job to be has job to done there, and I call for its charter to be reviewed to better enhance communication on IGF. Also, I see that we still have good content on IGF website with regular updates, but also we need to communicate wide those contents, helping secretariat and also to translate them to reach others from non-English people. In this, I'm ready to volunteer to be part of any translation team from English to French. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Mamadou. Rudolf? Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I am, as I told before, a new MAC member, and I'm going to profit from this new, fresh um, capacity that I have to give perhaps uh, an impression that I had from the last IGF and also from the session yesterday. And then I would like to uh, convey to you a little bit what we have gathered in Germany by the meetings with our um, IGF Germany and our stakeholders uh, during the last weeks where we had intensive discussions about all the issues that have been raised by you, Chair. So first, um, the, one, of, one of the observations, and, and that might be one of the reasons why it, why it is like it is, was that um, at least yesterday we had a, a room full of people uh, with only very few very vocal persons speaking and uh, the, those uh, shaping the discussion. So um, I think this is uh, true for everybody um, if we want to have... Uh, a broad picture and if we want to have uh, uh, a consensus or, or a direction that we want to go to, we all have to 
speak out and give our impressions. Not only few. I, f I found this very striking yesterday. Um, and um, when we, when, when I was uh, last year uh, uh, here was my first IGF, and when I first time in my life saw um, the agenda of the IGF, um, it was it seemed to me like a piece of modern art. Um, because it was very colorful and um, very bright and shining but, um, and very impressionist, but uh, it did not give uh, to somebody from the outside any you know, uh, red line or any you know, um, focus or where, where, where does it want to go, wh what, is the, what is the priority and so forth. And this is why um, I can nearly everything that has been said by um, Mr. Schneider uh, support. When we, when we were um, discussing with our German um, uh, IGF, Germany IGF, and, and our um, stakeholders, um, one of the first points that came up was uh, we need more structure, uh, we need um, a logical structure uh, of the IGF that, um, that gives a um, that gives a, uh, a focus on um, priority issues that we have to um, define in the MAC. Not so many, three, four, perhaps five, but five would perhaps already be too much. And then um, it would perhaps be good to have one day, one theme, and uh, go into this theme, like, for instance, artificial intelligence, uh, from a very general into a very deep uh, perspective. And there um, you have something for the newcomers, you have something for the experts, you have something for um, governments, businesses, uh, and so forth. And um, perhaps it is a very good idea um, what has been reported from the Eurodic, not to call for workshops, but to call for themes uh, and issues. So this was one of the points. The second point was that we were very much pleased by um, what, what, uh, what is being called the Geneva messages. And this is really something that we should be built on. And if we succeed to have this kind of uh, focused approach, um, the messages could be even sharper and even uh, clearer. And they could very well feed into the discussion um, for legislators, for international organizations, for business um, uh, models, and uh, so forth. Um, we also read the, um, the mandate of the IGF, and I'm just flagging it here not, without asking for it. Um, it is possible for the MAC, oh, oh, this is because of <laughs> my, this is because of my intervention. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> no. what, what I was going to say, I mean, it, it, is, it is in the, in the mandate of the MAC, I mean, perhaps it's not the thing we should aim at, but just to flag it, it is possible to give recommendations. It is possible. Perhaps it's not um, easy, but it is possible. The third point was that um, the inclusion of, uh, and you said it, the Global South is very, very important. And um, we are, at least in Germany, now speaking with our Ministry for Cooperation in, in order to try to, for our 2019 host, um, host country role, to, to try to, to uh, give uh, help and assistance to those who want to assist and who want to come, not only remotely, but also on the spot, because uh, it's not possible to have this discussion only in the northern half, uh, in the northern hemisphere. It's not good. Um, one more uh, thing uh, has been said, and it, it, is, it has been also reported to us, that uh, the business community or the representation of the business community was not as um, broad as we could have wished. Um, one of the arguments that came from our business community, from the larger and the not so larger companies, was they would like to have the possibility 
for some kind of uh, presentation of themselves. I don't want to talk about sponsoring because then we go into a very difficult um, situation with the UN, I know it, but um, we should think about possibilities to have, um, to, have, to have the companies to have, you know, some booth or something um, because then they, for them, it's much easier to um, give funding and also to assist on various levels. Um, and uh, no, I think that was basically what I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Uh, just a quick comment on the um, uh, companies giving a presentation of themselves. Uh, we do have the um, idea of village, and if a company wants to give a um, have a booth showcasing their internet governance efforts, they can. Yes, I mean they can't sell you know SIM cards or whatever, but they can say this is uh, Deutsche Telekom and this is what we do in internet governance sphere. Yeah. <laughs> At the same time, I think we need to be quite careful with that because there are costs associated with it in terms of venues and space and a host of other things as well. So we need to to um, think that through, I think, quite carefully, venue dependent. Um, next in the queue uh, was Sylvia. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, um, well, I, I think that we have to strike some balance between like reality and dream, let's say. Um, and I, I think that uh, although I, when, when you ask uh, Madam Chair about the appetite uh, for reform, I, I said to Susan Chalmers when we were in the train this morning that I, I, I have the hammer with me. So I, I'm happy to work on, on deconstruct things and try to figure out new things, but I also, because my, a lot of the work that I do is on innovation. I also know that the challenge when you decide to innovate is that you tend to um, get rid of things that although might seem boring or uh, uh, not as exciting as others, then you tend to take them down and, and that uh, actually makes life very difficult for newcomers and also um, uh, gives the idea that nothing has thought before when there is actually a wealth of knowledge and, and, and experience uh, from previous years. So I, I you know, I, I guess we need a, a cautious hammer, let's say, to tackle the challenges on how, how to structure the, 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 the program of, of the event and how to incorporate the intersectional work into the, the event as such. Um, on, that, on that point, I, I think that one of the biggest uh, challenges that um, we may uh, uh, have when talking about in more interactive um, formats and is that the whole process starts with sessions. So you, you have to come up with a session. You have to come up with a plan. If it is a workshop or a round table, then the, the session is you start looking for who's going to speak in that, and then it's the, the never-ending queue of, of uh, speakers. So I, I think the methodology to approach the issue um, is, is putting us in a repeating the problem uh, over and over again. But I think that the IGF has a, a tool that is very useful, that is the resource persons list. And I think that maybe one of the issues that can, um, the innovations that can be introduced is to try to ask for the, instead of only people, maybe also try to figure out what is the contribution that a specific organizations would like to do to the discussion. So if we had like a resource list of organizations and people that they appoint, right? Uh, maybe that is a way for the MAC to consider who the MAC will um, appoint or call to be part of sessions. So then the MAC can have a little bit more, not control, let's say, because we want to be a, a, a bottom-up uh, approach, but 
a little bit more control on how the flow of the conference actually takes place. Because the problem is you, you have a session, you approve a workshop, and then how that workshop fits into what Rudolf was explaining, for example, about, which I, I really like your idea about, okay, let's have a theme on a day, and then you start with the new common information, and then I would do it probably the other way around, because if, if it is the end of the day, I will be so tired that I probably will not get to the deep end. But let's say, let's say um, you have a theme for the day. If the MAC has the contributions from organizations that can fit into that puzzle for the day, then it would be easier to build a puzzle for that list of sessions or uh, facilitated discussions that you may have around a particular issue. But when you start building the puzzle based from workshops as such, and mergers are an issue, and, and you, my workshop are accepted and yours don't, as, as uh, he was mentioning, um, it makes life difficult. So I, I think that maybe um, having a clearer picture about what organizations want to bring to the table can help to structure the sessions better. And I, I think that the, um, it would be also good to ask those organizations what kind of diversity are they bringing to the table. Um, and, if, and that also will help um, um, to address many of those challenges. So if, if that request for uh, resource organizations instead of resource persons it is based on stakeholder, region, the, uh, gender, and et cetera. And the, then the diversity of viewpoints will be picked up and we will be able to identify who is arguing for uh, an A or a B or a C or whatever. So thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. I um, just want to clarify one thing, um, particularly given there are so many new MAG members. Historically, what the uh, MAG has done is put out a call for workshops. A few years ago, we put out a, a call for workshops on the basis of a, a main theme and some sub-themes or tracks. Um, and then the workshops are chosen on the basis of their individual merit and filled out the modern art painting that Rudolf <laughs> talked to. Um, two years ago, we decided as a mag to um, go with just a, a, a main theme, tried to make it fairly broad. Um, and. Uh, ask the community to, to submit workshop proposals, and then again, depending on the ones that were chosen on their individual merit, um, we aggregated those into themes. So we sort of backed into themes through some, some tags. Um, none of those processes are written in stone or in tablets that need to go forward. If the MAG determined that it wanted some piece of the process to follow that really open community process, it could. If the MAG said they wanted to dedicate some of the, the you know, program space, if you will, to something that was either more streamed, as I think one of the words Thomas used, or, um, you know, a, a, a kind of an integrated thematic flow or something, as Rudolph just said. It's up to the MAG to decide if they want to do that. So I just, um, you know, for those that have either been on the MAG for some years, it's not cast in stone that we follow the exact same process that's been followed for, for many of those other years. We, of course, need to make sure that um, any things that do come up you know are supported by the community at large or that the community at least um, understands what the mag is trying to do and any of the changes they're they're making but I think those are some of the decisions we need to come to today because we should come out of these two days with a strong idea of what the overall program looks like what we want to accomplish with the program and then that would obviously lead to an appropriate call um, for for proposals Raquel you are next in the queue Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, I want to go straight to the point and answer your question about the appetite for the MAG to review uh, and really be bold on, on, on reviewing the program. Uh, yes, plus one, thumbs up, whatever you want to call. Uh, it's time for action. I, I, I think I said before yesterday, but uh, it's time to take this tactical approach and be also uh, bringing the IGF. It's not only, yes, we've talked about fewer session, focused discussion, streamlined discussions, better outcomes, etc. But it's really the moment where the IGF can show its power to be flexible. I mean, uh, that's, uh, there is a distinction between reviewing, reforming, and being innovative and being disruptive. We are not going against the principles that the IGF is settled, which is being bottom up, being multi stakeholder, being agile. Uh, and it's important to remember, right? Uh, that's where what 
what we want for the IHF and its future. And I really thanks Thomas for his presentation and setting uh, the, the scene. I, I, I could agree with most of them, but uh, uh, I think it's also an opportunity that we make those changes while not corrupting or not changing the principles that we are, uh, that is the richness of the IHF. And we have this opportunity also with the new MAG, and I want uh, to recognize that we have half, of, almost half of the MAG uh, that are new, uh, and so we can bring this refreshed uh, views and we can really make a difference uh, on the future of the IHF. Um, so just to keep it short, yes, let's talk the details uh, through the afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, say that I, I like the idea of Rudolf and also Sylvia that uh, having multiple themes so that it get easier for the a newcomer to actually find out why he needs to go. Also can avoid actually some conflicting interests like I have to add in two sessions but happening parallel and missing some part as well. Saying that, uh, and uh, another point mentioned by Mike Nelson yesterday that bottom up plus side of approach that uh, if you can guide the sessions in a better way so that it can really help. Along with that, i like to focus on three issues actually. Yesterday came up in different speeches uh, from different stakeholders. That one is that including governments into the, including government more in, into the IGF processes actually. And, uh, and another issue came up that uh, the reports and outcomes should reach to the, all the stakeholders. And, uh, and uh, and one mentioned that it is another marketing issue because we have some output documents like B BPF and all the workshop has some reports. So uh, does it reaching to the people actually? That's the point. To address that, earlier actually I can remember in the last meeting I proposed that whether we can disseminate this document via the even channel, but probably that's not the right idea. But what I think that uh, every government has a mission in Geneva and uh, if we can have a session along with the MAG meeting or separately, we can uh, bring all the mission personnel here and share what happened in the last IGF and probably what we'll be discussing in the next IGF. And most of them will find their own challenges into that and they can actually look into it and they can give their feedback. So that's how actually we can interact government and we can also open up some outreach to the government and via government to the other stakeholders into that particular country. So that is what I have to focus on this moment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Zumhan. Uh, Rasha, you're next in the queue. Thank you, Lynn. Um, I think we've heard yesterday and today some uh, very interesting suggestions on, 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 and feedback on, on how to make things better. I think we all agree that we uh, need to make things better. We started this process uh, last year with regards to the sessions, and and I think we, uh, I think the plan was was to keep continuing on that uh, this year. I think we heard yesterday from from several uh, members of the community that that people already feel that the program was more uh, substantial and more focused, but we still have a long way to go uh, with that. And actually, some of the suggestions that might help us do that are already in the rules that we came up with. Uh, last year, but there was probably uh, not enough time for us to implement the whole system properly. And I, I just want to thank Lewis again for the wonderful job that he did last year uh, with the technical aspects of that because it was short, such a short uh, amount of time that he had to, to basically come up with a whole new system. Um, and maybe with his help again this year, we can catch a few of the, of the pitfalls. Um, so I, I guess what we're hearing, we, there seems to be like two con contrasting objectives that we need to arrive at. Number one, get more focus, and that would entail that you know a certain speaker does not appear 10 times and speak for 15 minutes every time. And at the same time, include more people uh, and, and be more inclusive of the community at large. Um, that, I think, uh, if we focus on, on, the, on some of the rules that we've, that we've uh, come up with uh, last year, that could be accomplished, uh, including, for example, that we, we had set to, uh, to restrict every speaker to a maximum of three sessions. This is already in the rules. 
However, this did not happen this year, so there were many speakers who appeared on five sessions or more. Uh, and I'm wondering if um, our wizard, Lewis, might be able to put something in the system that would uh, flash a signal when a speaker has been proposed for more than, <laughs> or, <laughs> or approved for more than three sessions. I mean, we can, we can talk about the details, but we need, to, we need to catch that because some speakers were there in every session, uh, just the same faces, and that restricts newer members of the community to, to become involved in the process. Uh, the other thing is I somehow don't feel that people put enough effort, I don't want to generalize, but some people don't put enough effort or thought into the proposal. I feel that people come close to the deadline and they just want to put ev anything in there and then they will work on it later, uh, you know, during the time between the proposal is actually submitted and the actual IGF. Um, I mean, we've, we've all received invitations to speak on panels way after the panel was accepted or, you know, very close to the, to the IGF uh, time. And I think, again, we need to, to work around that and we need to send a strong message to the community early on that enough effort needs to be put in the proposal at the submission stage, not later, at the submission stage. So again, last year we stipulated that speakers that get, uh, whose names get on the, on the proposal should be confirmed speakers. They should have at least uh, confirmed their willingness to uh, show up in, in the panel if uh, you know, their visas are granted and, and all the logistics work out. Uh, so that's something else that I don't think, I mean, I've, I've talked to people in the conference who said, oh my God, I'm on this panel. I didn't even know until this morning. You know, and this still happens and somehow we need some system, maybe a generated email you know, to every speaker whose, whose name appears on the list. You know, uh, maybe the, the uh, proposer would include an email and an automatic email would be sent to that person, you know, uh, telling them your name has just been added to this, uh, to this uh, uh, proposal. Would you click this link if you approve of being included? Something of the sort. Uh, and that again, I think, done with, with uh, a minimal amount of effort, but it would, it would um, accomplish a great deal. So I have um, a few very specific suggestions. I don't know if you want me to go through them now. Would that be appropriate? If the suggestions are in line with what you just said, I think it's probably more appropriate a little bit later. Okay. A lot of these have All to right. do on the back end of the process okay. in my mind and not on um, kind of what we're actually considering the overall shape or... Um, Sounds good. Okay. Thank you, Rasha. One, one more thing, if I may, just the focus on, um, on the themes. I think that's a good idea if we, if we can focus on uh, a few themes. I would, however, not put one theme per day because this would mean that uh, sessions would be put in parallel, um, you know, regarding the same topic that people are interested in. So people would be kind of torn where to go. So I think we, they need to be distributed over the four days. So and I'm not even sure one theme per day means that's the only thing that happens right. on that <laughs> particular day. You could actually have a theme but have others in session as well, which simply says if you wanted to follow, to use Rudolph's example, artificial intelligence, you have the ability to follow that in a, in, in a, you know, a stream manner, if you will, that, right. um, but also choose if you're at a beginner level and you don't want to participate in the expert, you go to some other sessions and then come back in. I mean, I think we need to, to all be pretty, um, pretty open here. Um, uh, Paul, you were next in the queue. Thank you, uh, Paul Rowney. Uh, I just want to go, there, there was some mention about connecting the next billions and uh, you know, whether we, we should continue talking about that or not. Uh, coming from Africa, I think we should because that's where a lot of the disconnected uh, citizens uh, live. But I think we also need to start looking at, you know, why, why we haven't connected them. You know, wh wh what is inhibiting uh, uh, everyone getting online? You know, things, you know, and big challenges are things like language. You know, we present uh, the internet to them in, in certain constricted languages and uh, most people on the continent uh, don't speak those languages, particularly the disconnected people. So, you know, it, it, is, it is a pressing issue. You know, other issues such as uh, AI and uh, big data, etc., uh, on the continent, we're not really participants. Uh, we're affected by it, uh, but we're passengers. But uh, getting our citizens connected, uh, getting our communities uh, part of the digital economy are key to transforming uh, Africa and enabling it to, to be an equal partner uh, moving forward. So I'm, I'm just saying we should keep it on the agenda, but maybe start uh, to interrogate why 
uh, we're failing and uh, you know there's many reasons and I can bring many of those to the table as to why we're not achieving it and how we can overcome those uh, challenges. No, I, mean, I think that's useful and maybe you could even um, talk to Raquel who was one of the leaders of the, the Connecting and Naming the Next Billions which was a major policy initiative, intercessional major policy initiative. Well, at the same time, of course, access was a pretty significant piece of the IGF's agenda overall. But if there are some thoughts on another particular um, activity we can do and drive in a, in a track matter that might be appropriate, and, and Raquel's nodding her head yes, I think there's a question as to whether or not the Connecting Neighborhood the Next Billions, there is a phase four that would be <coughs> useful and the right priority for us, or should we move to something different? <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, Sorry, Anna. You're next. Thank you. you. Sorry, Natalano speaking. Just adding a couple of comments, basically following up to what has been said before. I do agree that we should try to be a bit more bold and try to bring some innovations into the format and the content of the IGF. Um, on the idea of looking at introducing some overarching topics or themes, I think that's a good idea. But um, I agree also with the chair that we should not stick to one team per day or something like that because it might not work with the many people around. Um, giving you one example or some food for thought at CDIG, which is of course a much smaller initiative. Um, this year, based on community input, we have chosen data as our overarching topic. And we're not discussing only about data, of course, because that's impossible, but we are showing the connection of the various sessions with data so people have a, a general idea of what um, the discussions are going to be about and how the various sessions are actually linked to each other. So that's one um, thing to maybe consider um, as we look at the sessions. Then another thing, maybe we can reduce the number of parallel sessions. I know this has been um, discussed for a long time, but we keep hearing the same things, that it's too much and people cannot actually focus on everything. And um, we have had these discussions at CD Goal so for the last um, four years, and we keep asking the community whether they want to go into parallel sessions, and they keep saying no, because we want to all be more or less um, around the same space and be involved in the same discussions. Again, I am aware that this is not something that could work for the IGF because it's a much um, larger scale initiative, but maybe looking into reducing the number of sessions, um, it's something we could do. Then uh, my last point, something I was discussing with um, Sylvia a couple of days before, um, and that relates to the content of the meeting itself. We have been having IGFs for the past 11 years, and we keep hearing, I think, all of us, uh, people complaining that we do hear people saying the same things all over again, at least on some topics. So maybe we could at least encourage session organizers to look at the reports of last year's sessions and make sure that when they write their session description or proposal, they suggest how they are actually going to continue that discussion. Maybe the secretariat can help here with putting the reports together based on teams, and maybe when the, the IGF gets a bit richer, we can look a bit into doing some text analyzing or text mining to actually offer the community some sense of where the discussion is on a specific topic. Thank you. I think those are all very, very useful suggestions, ones we should consider as we look at kind of the front end of the, the um, uh, workshop or process. Um, the next in the queue is Yuta, I think. Yuta? Yes, thank you for giving me the floor, Chair. I'm tempted to comment on all the suggestions and the good suggestions that have been made before, but I. I've tried to look a little bit more in detail into the reasons why we see the need to, for improvement. And um, when, when we are, I, I understood that many people coming to the IGF the first time, uh, they just get lost. They are overwhelmed on the topic, on the program, on the agenda. And um, the reason, I think, is what do people expect when they come to their first IGF? They usually expect a typical conference with a typical program with high-level speakers, panels, and the, so on and so on. Most people do not know that the IGF is different, and we've been talking about the uniqueness of the IGF, the bottom-up approach, the openness, the equal footing, but many people come to the IGF and they are not aware of that. And um, I think still the internet is different from what many people have grown up with, and also internet governance is different 
from the governance of many other areas. People are just not used to the idea, but still that's the strength of the IGF. And I do think uh, we need to make the program attractive for all stakeholders and also to, to make it clear that it's one of the strengths of the IGF that there you have the opportunity to listen to speakers that are not only the high level. We will have the high level, but we need also to have the, the, the newcomers and the people who don't speak up in any other conference. And uh, I remember the Hyderabad uh, IGF as one of the opportunities when after the Mumbai, Mumbai attacks, uh, many of the high level speakers did not turn up and we had much more debates with other people that usually would not speak. So I, I still remember that as a very good experience and I think we should try, and that's a communication task, to make clear why the IGF is different and then we can stick to some of the, 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 the formats that we already have and we can also have uh, room for improvement. Um, I do like the idea of having a structure of the program by topics, uh, but this could also become a pitfall because then people might only show up for a specific day when that, this topic they are going there is addressed, but then we would lose uh, the benefit of a cross-sectoral exchange that we alway, always had at the IGF. So I just would like you to have that in mind when we consider how we can improve uh, we need a mixture of sticking to something and having some innovation, I think. Thank you. Thank you, Yura. Carlos? Carlos Fonseca, you have the floor. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, just, just a few thoughts on uh, uh, what, what was said uh, previously about, uh, you know, Mag's influence and, and and um, uh, the importance for the IGF to reach out to other uh, stakeholder uh, governments, particularly in, in, in the private sector. Uh, I, I believe we had this discussion last year, uh, and uh, the fact that we are still discussing this proves that we have not yet found a solution uh, to that uh, problem. Uh, last year, this issue was raised, I, I, if I remember well, it was raised in June in our uh, meeting here in the context of the evaluation of workshop proposals. This was a, a moment when, we, when we, we debated this thing. If, if, uh, if I remember well, and maybe uh, the Secretary can help me with that, I think 19 out of the 265 proposals, workshop proposals, selected for evaluation came from governments, and, and both uh, as a lead proposer or a co-proposer, which represented like something like 5% of, uh, of the uh, uh, proposals. And then a lot, another 7% came from uh, IGOs and 10% uh, from the private sector. Almost 70% came from the civil society. And um, of those uh, 19 proposals for, that came from government, none of them was uh, selected in the first evaluation process, uh, which uh, forced us to put some extra work during the, the, this meeting in June in order to have at least, I think, four of them finally selected for, uh, you know, for the IGF. Um, I think the situation is possibly uh, going to repeat itself this year. So I, I, it's maybe important to understand why so few proposals uh, came from governments and, and and, and then why none of them were selected uh, during the first stage. And uh, the, the answer to that question, I think, is pretty obvious. Uh, you know, governments are not engaged in governments and uh, not familiar with the way uh, the IGF works. And then the problem here is to understand if governments do not understand the IGF because they are not engaged of, or if uh, governments uh, uh, are not engaged because they don't understand. I mean, the other way around. I mean, this is something we ha we, we need to to try to understand. Um, another problem, I think, has to do with uh, uh, the proliferation of different fora discussing uh, uh, aspects, uh, different aspects of internet and digital economy. Um, the, 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 this proliferation is is a fact. Uh, 
we have, I don't know how many uh, global committee on this and global commission on that and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this means uh, a competition um, for the attention of, of, of different actors and increasingly, increasingly for uh, <coughs> the attention of our government actors. And then I speak for myself. I've been invited to, I don't know, 100 different things, and it's very difficult to, uh, to be here and be there, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I think this uh, poses two sorts of problems uh, or challenges, uh, both in terms of communication how to better communicate and how to better explain uh, the importance of the IGF. I believe we should not take for granted uh, that people or governments understand this, uh, you know, the uniqueness and uh, longevity of the IGF to use some of uh, your words. Um, this also poses challenges in terms of outreach. Uh, and then about uh, outreach, uh, I think uh, uh, it would be maybe uh, uh, wise to refer to some of the suggestions that, uh, suggestions that were made previously. Uh, obviously, uh, the fact that the Secretariat is in Geneva uh, makes it very easy for the Secretariat to try to reach out to uh, diplomatic missions. You know, uh, I think Thomas mentioned that and another colleague mentioned that. Uh, why not use this uh, um, fact, you know, uh, to try to organize meetings or briefings. It's very common for, uh, you know, uh, IGOs that are in here in Geneva to organize briefings. This happens all the time. Uh, you know, the WTO organizes this sort of thing all the time, all the time. Uh, my mission is invited to dozens of those briefings. I'm not sure the Secretariat, uh, our Secretariat here uh, does that. But I think if it does not, it should do, you know, because it's something that the missions are used to. And if you organize a briefing about a topic, uh, I, I believe the mission will send someone, you know, uh, because it's used to do that. And they have, you know, the, 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 um, uh, I don't know, dozens of, uh, of, of diplomats working here. So it would be very easy to do that. Oh, let's organize some briefing on one topic and then, you know, they, they will send people. They are used to do that. You know, it's it's part. It's in it's in their uh, DNA, so they are just to they they're going to do that. Uh, maybe another thing would be uh, someone mentioned that, and I think it's a good idea, uh, how to use uh, NRIs to try to to reach out to national governments. Um, it's something that could be uh, feasible. Why not do that? You know, NRIs they they are, they are in a position that maybe they can reach out to their national governments uh, easier than, uh, you know, the Secretariat or we, we can do. And uh, finally, just uh, another word. I think it would be very important to establish connections with other, those other fora, you know, including IGOs. They are discussing uh, topics that are related to Internet governance, uh, such as the, the World Economic Forum. You, you lean, uh, was invited, and I think it was very important that you participated in this, you know, in the world, internet, and the world, or the economic forum, but also the G20, also the, you know, OECD, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the G20 recently, like two, two years ago, established a task force on digital economy. Uh, it has been uh, working on, on different topics uh, that are related to our business here, uh, directly or not, but they are related, right? Uh, um, uh, last year, the Germans were, uh, uh, were uh, and, and had chaired the, 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 the G20, and uh, uh, we, we established a, a, uh, a roadmap with uh, 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 11, if I, if I remember well, uh, 11 different uh, uh, areas uh, prior with priorities, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now the, the presidency is, uh, is, is in Argentina. And Argentina is organizing that, and we already have uh, had a meeting in January. We are going to have a meeting now in April, and, and the focus will be uh, on uh, work, on jobs, jobs creation, job destruction, et cetera, et cetera. And then there will be another one in, in a meeting in August, et cetera. Uh, the last meeting that happened in Buenos Aires, I remember ITU was invited, WTO was invited, uh, IMF was invited, World Bank was invited, uh, the, the uh, IDB, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the IGF was not invited. I mean, why not, right? 
I mean, yeah, to be there and to participate. And uh, um, the same goes with the OECD. There is a committee on, uh, on economic uh, uh, digital economy policy. And uh, it's uh, supposed to be a multi-stakeholder uh, event because uh, uh, the, you know, uh, civil society is represented there, uh, trade unions are represented there, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, this is just a few ideas, but I think that there is work to be done there. And uh, to answer to your question about the World Economic Forum, I think yesterday, after the presentation, you asked it, if it, it was uh, appropriate or not uh, to participate. I think this is a no-brainer, of course. Yes, uh, you know, the IGF should be in touch. The IGF should connect, and the MAG, uh, the mag chair should be there. So uh, this is my opinion. Thank you very much. No, thank you, Carlos. A lot of uh, good uh, good ideas. Um, we did do um, some reach last year um, with Diplo. In fact, with a lot of the IGOs that were here, and the year before in Mexico with the missions. Uh, sorry, in um, in the U.S. in New York with the Mexican mission there to reach out to the missions in, in New York. We can do much, much more of that. But the message is also important that when you talk to the missions here or the IGOs here or government here, that it actually goes back to the capital as the message as well. Um, if we actually want really appropriate um, engagement, lasting engagement, then it needs to get back to capital and, and move out from, from there. And of course, a lot of the other um, entities you mentioned, a lot of the organizations in this room participate in them. And I think one of the things we could do in a very low overhead way would be ensure that whenever they have the opportunity, they make it clear, um, you know, a, a, the role of the IGF, where we fit in. Um, if we need to prepare some sort of standard talking points for that, we can do that. Um, but I think there, there were a, a lot of good ideas and we should take some of them up and at the same time encourage everybody here to use the opportunity to promote the IGF every time you can when you yourselves or your organizations are participating in, in those events. Um, but um, a lot of good ideas, thank you. Next in the queue is Ben. Ben Wallace, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn. Um, yes, so I'd like to make um, three points. Um, the first is about the fundamental nature of the IGF. So as I said in my introduction, um, the value for me is, is have a meeting. The annual meeting brings together such a broad range of, of ideas uh, and views and, and experiences. and it's given me the opportunity both to, to learn about new topics and, and to learn new perspectives on topics I thought I already knew. So I think it would therefore be um, a mistake uh, to look for more concrete outputs um, in a way that would dilute from uh, the, the energy that enables such a rich uh, exchange of views and, and turns it, uh, I think as, as Mark mentioned yesterday, into a, a negotiating forum. Um, so the second point is, is how might we get more out of the existing um, written outputs? So I wanted to um, echo some comments from non-MAG members yesterday. Um, there are already many uh, outputs. I think one thing we could do as the MAG this year is to consider how they could be better presented, organized, uh, and marketed. On top of the um, the existing written outputs from every meeting. Um, I agree with a, a number of speakers today and yesterday that the Geneva messages uh, were a welcome innovation from the last meeting. Uh, indeed, I thought uh, Canada made a good point that part of their value um, was in making the outputs of each session um, more uniform. So as I understood it, the Geneva messages were just uh, for the main sessions, but I think we could try and do the same um, for the reports that come out of other sessions, um, providing organizers with a clear framework and a template um, for when they produce their reports and making sure those reports do come in. So, for example, that could include that there has to be a half page or a one page summary, and that would make it easier to compile outputs from each session into a, a more readable set of proceedings for each annual meeting, um, a rich repository of, of easily browsable, searchable material that will live on on the IGF website. Um, the last point I wanted to cover uh, for now was about the reduced participation of certain constituencies. Um, 
and particularly this is uh, the, the point that's been raised is, is how to increase government and business participation and I agree that's a, a concern um, as a MAG member representing the private sector I will take responsibility for finding ways to reach out to the business community um, encouraging their engagement uh, a wider engagement at the IGF um, I thought it was an important point from um, Carlos just now that the NRIs might be well placed to uh, reach out to national governments um, and encourage them to participate in the annual meeting. It, it could be helpful to um, encourage workshop organizers to invite business speakers uh, which wouldn't already be planning to attend the IGF. Um, they might not even be aware that it exists. So uh, that might be startups or, or SMEs which uh, we might be aware of that are doing something really interesting with technology that's contributing to um, digital transformation and, and digital inclusion, but they might not be aware of the IGF. Um, and it, it might also be a question of having topics or, or framing discussions which, uh, in a way that they're of interest to those constituencies which have low participation. So for business, it might be about framing the discussion in a way that asks them to think about how do they feel they, they do or can contribute to the SDGs or what prevents them from contributing to the furthering of the Sustainable Development Goals. Thanks. Thank you, Ben. Um, a lot of good suggestions, and in particular with respect to some of the um, thoughts around how we can increase private sector participation. Look forward to uh, trying to put some of those into practice and coming up with more. Uh, Helani, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn. Um, I want to pick up from a comment I think I heard from Michael Nelson yesterday in the um, um, there are still many sessions or many speakers in many sessions that are talking about interesting projects and not addressing governance issues so I th you know we need a way to ensure that the panels are really related to internet governance. There are many other venues where you can present, you know, great community initiatives or connectivity initiatives. We need to be able to pick up the governance related issues that come from those initiatives and design panels around them. I, I think otherwise we're going to lose relevance and this is part of the reason some people now think they should just go speak in other fora and not at uh, the internet governance forum. Um, Second, I see some danger in assigning themes per day because people do sometimes want a broad uh, perspective on things um, and they want to be in multiple places. So following a theme throughout the multiple days might be easier, but I do very strongly support themes. So whether they're arranged across days or whatever, that's a different matter, but I do support themes, and I think it might be possible to f find this grounds up versus <coughs> highly curated balance if we do it right. Of course, it also means that there's more work from us as MAG members. So if we go back to a few years ago when there were themes announced and we could propose themes along, uh, workshop proposals and, you know, uh, along those themes, we have a set of themes that we collectively agree on. We call for proposals on those themes, but we also in the submission form allow for new themes because we should not be so proud to think that we know all the emerging themes. That's part of the richness of the bottoms up initiative. So we do allow for that. And then we either in small groups or collectively curate, we have ownership for some of these themes as small groups of the MAG. And then we really pick A, the best proposals if there are new themes then we assign people to curate those themes and we decide whether these 10 proposals should be merged into seven, five, two, or maybe call for more, and so on. And we give conditional acceptance on actually implementing that merger because often workshops are merged and then some people just completely get taxed and nobody checks whether now the regional representation, gender balance, uh, the viewpoint representation is maintained in the new merge proposal. So a bottoms up and a slightly more hands-on curated approach um, and a two-step approach might be good. I know people are rolling my eyes, their eyes because it's like, oh my God, another round for us to do. I also do support uh, coding um, 
sort of visually coding the program based on themes and level of expertise. So newcomers and experts will find it easier to sort of navigate. To s they'll understand where this session is being pitched at as a very introductory or expert session. Um, and I really do support the proposals somewhere from the back that came about enforcing what we say we want to do, you know, th three or whatever the end we decide on. Panels per speaker. I mean, and I speak as somebody who's starting with one speaking slot in Rio in 2006, has moved up to eight, unfortunately, and not by choice, but because I feel responsible because I'm the only person from Asia and the only female in a panel, so you feel you're obliged to. But I really should not have to be in that way. And I'm civil society, and 70% of the participation is civil society. So it's a ridiculous situation. So I think we should enforce these things and a lot of the IT tools can be used like just confirming that the government person who's invited is actually aware that they're invited. I mean so many panels where the people aren't aware so let's also use technology to enforce some of these things that we are uh, trying to enforce. Thank you. Many many good points Salani. Thank you. Uh, Miguel who is who is uh, participating online. So you'll either need to watch the transcript or put your headphones on. Miguel, you have the floor. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I agree with many comments from Thomas and also from you, Lynn. I think we need to make changes uh, for the idea to keep relevant and also affordable. I believe gradual uh, approaches are forgotten from idea to, to idea. Uh, and, and in the matter of sessions, uh, I think in interprofessional work should become the rule instead of the exception. We should try to make the idea a place to showcase global processes we solve and avoid repeating the silos inside silos experiences we had. Uh, maybe when there's a BPA for DC on a specific topic, we shouldn't accept sessions on that topic by asking the proposal to join those BPAs and DCs. I think this will help reduce the number of sessions and keep them the stakeholder and bottom up spirit of the IGF we have. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel. Now we have Miguel Candia, who's actually here in the, in the room. Thank you very much, Chair. I don't know why my name is appears in all caps letters. But I presume it's to <laughs> I presume it's to differentiate myself from the famous Miguel. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chair, I wanted to start uh, uh, by thanking the ambassador uh, for uh, for an excellent organization from la from last year. I do believe it was a a very interesting way of uh, looking at the IGF, at the organizational part of the IGF. And uh, we have um, come with, uh, with good lessons from it, uh, the good messages, positive messages, strong messages. Um, I'm, I'm, I've, um, I support a lot of the proposals that were made in the floor. I don't want to repeat them all. Um, but I wanted to, to say that uh, at some point it felt that we were criticizing a lot uh, the work or the way we did past IGFs. When I, when I do see evolution, uh, it's bound to be like that. that we need to learn from mistakes, from uh, past experiences. And I think uh, what we need to, to make is uh, steps to make it um, even more useful, innovative, and to keep it up to date with the demands, the nowadays demands. Because what we, um, what, I, what I'm, I'm seeing is that the magnitude have ch has changed. The idea was there all the time, from the beginning, but now, uh, now we have more people talking about the issue. Now we have more people talking about the IGF in itself, and now we have uh, a task of making the IGF even more known. The IGF itself, uh, the, its results, even with or without uh, outcome documents, as it is now. Uh, so breaking these new silos that I would, I would say just because of the proliferation of fora, uh, the, the issue became so big 
uh, and it's going to be like that for the next few years, unless uh, un up until we take uh, uh, a, a road that would take us all together to, a, you know, a more formal way of governance. Uh, but so far, the beautifulness of the IGF is that uh, whoever meets us, they have to know that they are talking with a forum that, that is, with a forum that is free and open, and it's uh, and the participation is. Uh, it's uh, very, very diverse and creative and voluntary. So that's that would that's what we need to to keep. I don't. Uh, I, I suppose we're gonna go into, um, into more depth in the next points of the agenda. So I'm gonna stop here for now. Uh, and thank you, Joe. Thank you, Miguel. We have about uh, seven or eight people in the queue, and we have nine minutes before we break. Um, for those that we don't get to in the queue, of course, we'll pick up when we come back from from um, lunch. Um, Carlos, I think are you in the queue again? Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, that was a mistake. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and Israel, are you in the queue? Yep, briefly. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's fine. I'm not, I'm not, so just, I'm just trying to say that if anybody's looking at the queue and there's uh, quite a long list, if we don't get to you before the lunch, we'll pick it up after the break. Thank you, Chair Israel Rosas, for the record. Uh, just to briefly show my support to uh, promote changes and improvements to the IEF. I mean, we, we all know that uh, the IEF is a unique space, a bottom-up, multi-stakeholder uh, space for this cause and uh, promote uh, best practices and exchange uh, ideas. And uh, I bil build on, on previous comments about better publicize or, or share the, the outcomes of the current IEF efforts. Uh, thinking out loud, perhaps we could take advantage of the, um, of the Geneva messages of, of that format, of the BPFs, dynamic coalitions, NRIs, uh, all the intersectional work, in order to collect all the results for, for every meeting uh, in a unique publication. I mean, uh, we, all, we all know that uh, the, the BPF, the Dynamic Coalitions, produce a, a report, a yearly report, and perhaps for, for every meeting we could have a, a unique publication in order to make easy to share the, 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 the outcomes to the broader community. I, I agree with, the, um, with my colleagues that we, we have a lot of uh, forums, a lot of uh, spaces to discuss internet related issues, but this is a unique platform to, to address internet governance issues according to the multi stakeholder model and uh, a, a community built effort. So perhaps we could uh, promote that kind of uh, participation and um, uh, uh, and this effort of the communication and outreach. Thank you. Well, thank you, Israel. Those good comments. And I noted um, earlier the comment on maybe we should think about using something similar to Geneva messages for all of the sessions. And I think you extended that even further with respect to some of the intersessional activities as well. And I think that's an interesting idea. You know, one of the things we keep trying to say is how do we make all the information that's comes out of the, the IGF more accessible, you know, more comprehensible, um, easier to find. Something like that could be a relatively um, straightforward way to, to build it up. I think those are, are all good ideas. Uh, next in the queue, we have Arnold. Arnold. Uh, thank you, Lynn. Um, we still have seven to eight months, depending on the summer holidays, to go before uh, uh, the IGF will take place. Uh, well, if the IGF 2018 uh, is going to take place in November, if it will be held in, in October, it will be even less. So there's a great pressure on us as MAC to come up uh, with a, a good program. And I listened carefully to the other speakers before me and I support much of what Thomas uh, Schneider from the uh, host, former host country said, as well as uh, my colleague uh, Rudolf from Germany. Uh, particularly, I like to focus on uh, uh, priority issues instead of uh, uh, selecting workshops. We have uh, had in the past years lots of discussions where there was indeed a call for focus, but it's never been implemented. So I think now it's the time to do that, to make a new change. I wouldn't say a radical change, but uh, we have to, to, to make come up with a, a, a new concept. And therefore, I think we should uh, call for uh, topics, for issues. 
um, like this has been done in the European Internet Governance Forum called EuroDIC, and I heard also the US saying that it is in the US IGF the mainstream. Come up with uh, topics for discussions and then it will be implemented in the, in the program. Whether it will be in, in workshops mixed with all stakeholders, it could even be separate tracks, civil society dealing with uh, uh, five issues, five topics, um, the, the business sector likewise on the first two days of the IGF and perhaps come up with uh, their messages and then the next two days of the IGF which in my view could be four days maximum in the last two days it will all converge into a plenary session where we can have a thorough in-depth discussion on these topics on these messages which come from each stakeholder group and then try to see whether we come up at, at the end uh, with uh, some IGF uh, messages. Uh, and I think here is also a very important role for the uh, national and regional IGFs to come forward with topics, not only to, to, to tell uh, the, uh, their stakeholders uh, back home that there is a global IGF and you should go there, no, but also to discuss with their stakeholders on the topics there, the, the, the real priority issues which uh, is at stake in their, uh, their own country. We had our debriefing uh, uh, meeting in, uh, a couple of weeks ago in the Netherlands uh, on the IGF uh, 2017 and we came up with indeed this new concept of uh, uh, picking uh, priority issues. Uh, ourselves, we, we, we named a few e-skills, Internet of Things and Ethics, uh, blockchain standardization in relation to hard to secure hardware and software so there are some some topics which are already floating around and uh, this could be perhaps uh, be part of the uh, future uh, uh, agenda of the IGF 2018 we'll discuss that thank you Th thank you Arnold I think we'll have to make that the last um, intervention before lunch um, given the time and I'm I'm sure other people um, have uh, other meetings or people have other meetings scheduled during uh, during lunch. We'll pick up the queue as it sits here. Um, I you know, encourage people to over the lunchtime sort of think about. Um, you know, I, I can't say I can gauge kind of what the kind of level of appetite is for you know really trying something different in some portion of the. I hear some people. Um, Speaking for it, I hear others looking for change that I would say is more of a, a tinkering sort of level, and I think we need to find a way to um, get a call or a, a consensus of the MAG to gauge where they think there is room for innovation or experimentation. If, there, if the MAG believes there is room for innovation experimentation in the program um, next year so that we can then begin figuring out how we actually process our way forward through that. So. Who can think about that? Maybe some small meetings over the lunch hour. Uh, that would be great. We will be back here at 3 o'clock. Thank you.